Good evening. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, how's it going? Ted's first was chime up, so how's uh, everyone doing tonight? It's the uh, the month of the GPUs, I believe. <laughs> Everyone's doing all right tonight. I uh, figured uh, that our drive is pretty packed. Yes, yeah, so it's only a 12 gig hard drive. You'll see the specs here in a minute. But uh, yeah, as some of you saw on um, Discord and Twitter, maybe the hard drive is very, very full, mostly because it's an actual genuine machine from this era. This is a 1999 rig, right? I'm not sure if you saw that I posted before, but even Tiger, welcome. It's the Dell Dimension XPS T450. So uh, we'll see the specs in a second here, but so it's a Pentium 3 450 with a Voodoo 3. Evening, Mr. Uh, Zionio, if I said your name right. With a Voodoo 3 AGP uh, 3000, I think D. We can look at the system specs. Ian and Christopher, welcome. And I figured, you know, for GPU June, I should probably uh, focus on, like, at least streaming specific GPU eras. So this machine, like, you know what? I haven't streamed with a uh, Voodoo 3 yet, so I figured, why not? Um, and uh, I actually have, of course, the machine has a Voodoo 3 AGP in it, but this is a Voodoo 3 PCI. So you can at least see it. But I think most of you guys that are here are probably familiar with the Voodoo 3 card. Um, it's kind of like a just really, really good, like, does it kind of all you know, retro card. In Zuka, welcome. I think Zuka said this is, uh, the Voodoo 3 is one of your favorite cards, so this is not the card in the machine. I didn't rip it out. Uh, but yeah, this is the PCI version, so you have exactly this. I bought this from a coworker who was like, hey, I still have my Voodoo 3 card, so I gave him a few bucks for it, and he was happy, and I was happy. And, uh, Ian Van Lee, welcome. And I, I like the Voodoo 3. If you take everything away from, like, you know, the, uh, the, the fan craze around Voodoo stuff, because, I mean, I'm a little bit fanboyish on that, I suppose. I don't have any of the newer cards, but uh, it's a really good does-it-all card. We think of, especially the PCI one, because it fits in almost everything, handles just all the things from that era really well and good picture quality. So that's what we're running on here now. And I will switch to the, uh, to the big camera so you can see... Um, what we're dealing with. So I have... Uh, yes, I crammed uh, just a boatload of games on this guy. I think I have one gig free out of my 12 or 13 gig hard drive. You'll see the specs rolling by here soon. Uh, the interesting notes on this machine is that I didn't actually wipe it. So I did kind of clean up a little bit. I haven't wiped it yet. So it is original installation basically from 1999 that the guy had that I got this from. And it was on a, his college machine. And he was like, you know, hey, can you get the files off me or off it for me? And he hasn't come asking for those files yet, even though I asked him a couple times. So I'm like, all right, I won't wipe it just yet. But I did clean it up so that I could actually use it, install it. I took off some, you know, Anavar stuff and stuff like that. Got a pretty wicked collection of MP3s here. I can't play them, of course, because then I will get copyright flag right away. But, you know, all your late 90s favorites are here. Um, but it's sad I can't play any of them because I will get flagged immediately. But a lot of good stuff in here. Anyway, that's not where we're here. So I see the specs here right now. So, yeah, we got a uh, P3 450. Uh, with uh, 120 mega RAM, then the Voodoo 3 AGP, which the AGP and PCI, as probably you guys know, isn't much really any difference. They just added, uh, I think, a translation for uh, the PCI to AGP just to have, be able to say, hey, it's an AGP card, but I don't think it takes advantage of any of the AGP uh, speed boost. So then the spinning regular disc, that's now full, and then a uh, Turtle Beach Montego 2 sound card. Um, so it's a little bit of a non-standard setup in that sense. And he left all these sound effects on it too, so I kept them because I don't want to mess with that. It just feels so right for the era. Uh, I guess I should check that the DMA is enabled. Yep, there's that enabled. But it's a, it's a nice, solid system, and it's a true system from this era. And I, you can build all these, but this is like this is spec from Dell. I haven't touched anything on it as far as uh, components. It is just like it came from the factory. Doesn't look like the guys upgraded it. There are two drives in there. He might have added a, a CD burner at some point. So there's a second one. And fortunately for me, the D drive, the normal CD reader, doesn't work. It doesn't read disk. It probably needs to be cleaned out or something. But fortunately, the burner, which is the E drive, does work just fine. So we're up on that at least. Now, I grabbed a few handful of games I felt were appropriate for this era. Um, and, you know, there's so many games applicable for this era that I'm sure I missed someone's favorite, but I threw in a few here, which filled the hard drive, basically. Um, 
yes, this is a Dell that I mentioned and pre-built. So I think pretty much one of the better pre-built you could have gotten around this era. Because, um, I mean, he say, yep, exactly. He said, the guy that I got it from, he said, well, it better be nice because, like, you know, I spent a boatload of money on it when he bought it, basically for the best of the best at the time. I believe it. From a pre-built era from 1999, I mean, look at these specs then, the circle around here again in a minute. Think about that from just here what you got over the counter. It's a very capable retro machine now, but back then it would have been basically the cream of the crop. Uh, he even opted them for the highest version of the Voodoo, which I believe shows here too. Uh, display adapters, yeah. 3FX Voodoo 3 3000 D AGP, which I think is pretty much the top of the line one you can get. That's not the video. Yeah, it doesn't even have the specific drivers installed, so. Which again, I can tweak and fix and stuff, whatever. but I don't want to touch it. I kind of like it the way it is. So uh, we'll start with a game that I think runs really well on this machine. Sadly, because I'm using the secondary drive now, I don't think we'll get CD audio, but you'll get the experience anyway. I was going to potentially switch the CD audio cable, but I didn't have time. So Motorhead. Uh, love that. Uh, that is an arcade race here. But... So I'm sure I missed a lot of games here, but what are some of your favorites from this particular era? We're talking like 1999. You know, 98, early 2000 at best kind of thing. So, um, so I have it right here. It's funny because some of them don't like that ha that you have the uh, the uh, stuff in the secondary drive, like the E drive. Some of the games are able to launch from the CD-ROM. So some of this interlacing in the videos here look awful. I apologize for that. There's not much I can do about it. There's a video where it's interlaced, but. Uh, I thought this is a really, really awesome arcade racer. I enjoyed this a lot when I played it originally, and it's got a great sense of speed still. I think it was on PlayStation as well, but I think it's a good example of, like, you know, speedy Voodoo acceleration back uh, from this era, which is why I like the Voodoo 3 so much, because, you know, people can, uh, you know, correct me here. I am not a video card guru by long shot. I mean, compared to Pixel, you're on high. But, uh... I like the Voodoo 3 in the sense that it does so much. You know, you can get a great software rendering on it. Direct 3, OpenGL, and Glide. I think it does all of it, right? So uh, it's probably the most compatible, like, I'm trying to think of the most broad card you can think of. Eating just Mike, welcome. Yeah, Double 2 is really good, too. Um, it's funny, I never played that with the Voodoo support, I think, because I only had a Voodoo 1, never had a Voodoo 2. And then uh, by the time the Voodoo 3 was around, I had another card. I think it might be, uh, not this exact card, but this is a TNT card, or Reba TNT. I think I had a TNT 2, I think. It's weird, because I have kind of a blind spot from that era. I can't remember what I had, which is kind of weird for me. I think I mentioned that before, too. It's like, why can't I remember what video card I had around that era? Because I remember most of my retro computing stuff, but... Um... Yeah, this is Digital Illusion, so what is now known as DICE. And if you haven't tried this, it's a uh, really, really good uh, speedy arcade racer. Yeah, that was the golden era of FPS games around that time, wasn't it? Thinking about it? Excuse me? Spinning disc. I think... Uh, let's see, CD music, yeah. So unfortunately now the CD music isn't plugged in, so you'll have to listen to the... Uh, the uh, awesome, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So you pretty much need to. So, uh, no, I do not. Uh, welcome, Rails and Rust. Um, I don't have, I would love to get one of the daughter boards for that. I haven't really splurged for that yet. I've heard really, really good things about that kind of stuff. So, this particular Montego 2 that's in this computer is like it was stock. Um, there is no. Um, yay. Have those available yet? We'll just race with this. We'll do a couple of races here quick and we'll hop to another game too, but... Um, ooh, got the splash screen, right? That's mandatory. But it makes sense that it won't run with that memory for Diablo 2. I think I played... I don't remember. I don't think I really ever played uh, Diablo 2 Accelerated with Voodoo. I tend to turn off the, you know, the slam thing that they put into. Um, okay. Yeah, because, I mean, by the time TN2 2 came out, I mean, I'm sure they were diehard. Um, down on my side. Let me know if it's too loud there. The um, 
diehard people for uh, Voodoo. There always is, and I would love to test out the later Voodoo cards because I never got a chance to mess with them. But by the time the TNT2 came out, I mean, generalizing, that was pretty much it, right? I mean, it took over pretty much everything at that point. All right, I think this is a really good example of a just flat-out good arcade racer. Not super easy, but... Ugh. Yes, Darkstone is on there as well, so... <laughs> I can't wait, Sucra. Yes, Darkstone has an interesting one, too. We'll play that a little bit later. I uh, I used to have a copy, which made me sad, because I used to have the big box, and I mentioned that on other streams, too, at some point during a move. I unfortunately had all my big box games in garbage bags, which, you know, sounds whatever, but then I can't blame my parents for the time, because it got thrown out at some point, one of those, which is unfortunate, but I understandable. I can't blame them for that. So I lost a few games there, including Darkstone. I did have the big box for it. Plan on buying it again. Played it quite a bit. Uh, I think I'm at P2 or P3 500, maybe. So this is just about the right. Did not have the Voodoo 3, or I had a Voodoo at the time. Must have had whatever I had. That's what I can't remember. I think I had a TNT 2. Um, I'm focusing on racing now, so I'm missing the uh, chat there now. But I, I love the, uh, the color lighting and everything in this game. It holds up really well, I think, especially if you run on high resolutions on a, you know, say an XP era machine or even more, you know, powerful one. You can crank this up to very high and it plays real nice. Whoops. Too bad I'm horrible racing. Come on. A little bummed about the soundtrack because I have to mess with that at some point. But I think it's just because I have the CD which is needed to play in the um, secondary drive which I'm assuming doesn't have the CD audio cable plugged in, so. Well, he's really... This is not easy, too, I might add. Power sliding is not good in this game. You kind of lose momentum when you do that. So I realize I'm playing a very, you know, game that makes me focus here now, so now I can keep track of chat. I'll assume you guys are having a very interesting conversation right now. And also goes back to around this era when I was playing these kind of arcade racers, I did use keyboard, basically exclusively, which is why I'm driving now. I have one-handed driving, which, I know, mixed success, but that first car there is really... Time to get serious. I guess I have to use the brake. It's an arcade racer, you shouldn't have to hit the brake. And in this game, later on the uh, higher difficulties and the later levels, you are going to have to use, like, the bounce method, where you just bounce off the... Uh, the walls to keep up because otherwise you just can't breaking is not that important he's really taken off but it's a uh, I think this kind of build here like uh, mid to well I guess this is pretty early early to mid P3 gives you a heck of a lot of bang for your buck especially with a video card like this that has such a broad support which is why I was very pleased to, to get this machine for the price of well copies and files off it, right? Um, it can handle so many things and so much. Come on. Alright, I think we overtook him there. So I believe I set this to 1024. And I have a capture to scale to a fixed resolution, so that hopefully it shouldn't be uh, messing with that. But Ooh. Yes, one. All right, I'll try and catch up on chatter now. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the Voodoo 3, yes, for today's prices, I would not spend, like, you know, the money on on a Voodoo 3 for the sake of Voodoo 3. I think that, you know, going with a TNT or a TNT 2 at this point, if you can get a get better deal, it's going to be better. Or there's a lot of other options, I think, because I love the fact that I have the Voodoo 3, and I just say that because, I mean, it's hard to find. But spending the market price for it, uh, that makes it a harder sell. You're right, because there's so many things that are newer that can handle even more things. It's not like... I mean, for Voodoo, it's a really good wide compatibility card, but it's not like, you know, I'll drop all the money I have on buying a Voodoo 3. I wouldn't go that far. At least it's a first, like, retro card, because there are other options at that point, I think, that were better suited. So, um, but yeah, I would love to see your mess with the V5. And I... Um, so, yeah, Suka, you have a V5, right? Um, I've never played with one, and I don't know that it's, you know, today, 
if you were to go buy a video card for that era today, you're probably better off trying to find a TNT2 or something, right? Um, or something else. But spending the money on a Voodoo 5 at this point is basically, we get the little splash every time, basic a collector's item now, right? Which is the unfortunate thing. So, um, all right, I won't ask too many questions because I have a feeling that might be <laughs> covered here soon. But for those who are unaware or joining separately, uh, the this is the month of GPU June, uh, started by the YouTube channel Pixel Pipes. And the idea is to cover GPUs and everything under the month of June, which is why the little logo is right there. And I am streaming uh, with a specific focus on the Voodoo 3 today to kind of focus on that video card. So, But uh, I've already watched some of the videos that have been published under that uh, hashtag, and uh, there's some really good stuff there already. So I can't wait to see what everyone cranks out. Uh, my own video should be coming out here within a few days. Uh, on a semi-similar topic. I also will say, I will tease, I can't announce anything yet, but I might have a, a, a pretty cool event coming up here within a week or so. Um, that I think will be uh, pretty cool. I'm excited for it. I, I don't want to be a spo or teasing too much, but let's just say, just keep, uh, keep your ears and eyes open on a pretty cool thing I get to do here pretty soon. Uh, for now, I'm going to try and not... Fortunately, there's no damage mechanics in this game, so you can't crash, which is fortunate because my car would be busted right now. We'll probably only play the first little uh, campaign here. And this game has a lot of memorizing the best route and where things are. Um, and yeah, you're right with the Buddha 5. Um, <laughs> sorry, I wouldn't go that far. Maybe I can superimpose one of the uh, dancers from uh, Duke 3D or something in the uh, stream. Or uh, should I uh, replace myself with a, one of those new avatar things? Uh, but yeah, the Voodoo 5, you can tell, was kind of like... And again, I'm not a Voodoo expert, so people correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that the Voodoo 5 was kind of the last, you know, hurrah that they tried to do, and it was more just cramming more on the same card, which seems to always happen when they don't have a chip that can really fully compete. They just cram more data on there, or more of the same on to try and compete, and... I don't think it did at that point. It was kind of like a lost race already. I know that was tied a lot to uh, 3D effects, trying to... They bought the STB factory, right, that produced the Voodoo cards. And then there was a lot of problems integrating that into the production line, and that kind of was the, the final straw for them, I think, so... Sad. Uh, but it is what it is. They just... They came out quick. When you think about uh, how long 3D effects was on the scene, they were formed right in like 94, late 94 or something like that. They were like dead by 2001, 2002. That's a pretty short time span. Considering the market dominance they had for a while there, the Voodoo 1 and the Voodoo 2, there was nothing else like it. But then everyone caught up, of course. May or may not be uh, related to a topic I'm covering, too, in my video. <laughs> I'm not doing well on this race here. I'm on lap 2 out of 3, and I'm in flat out. 7 out of 8, and they're just overtaking me. I think the AI is really uneven in this game, if I remember right. Sometimes they're just, like, barely doing anything, and then other times they just destroy you. So we'll just, uh... Let's play this for a little bit, and then skip to something else. Skip to a shooter that I used to play that I think is really cool, too. Whoop! And hit the ceiling. So, yeah, what I love about this game specifically is, besides the soundtrack that you can't hear... Whoops! I spit out talking. Uh, is just a sense of speed. I think it's just really good in this one. Um, I would love to try it on PS1. I never did, but I can't imagine it run. It looks quite as good unaccelerated. So this really shines when you accelerate and get all that color lighting and all that cool stuff. So ooh, ooh, come on. I just want to say uh, have a smack there. <laughs> There's a wall. I have a lot of people on here, so I really appreciate everyone joining. Welcome for anyone who's new. Just kind of trying to not make a fool out of myself driving, and that's not going so well right now. See that when you lose grip and start sliding, it looks cool, but in this game, you lose a lot of speed. So, so I won the last one, and seven out of eight on this one. Eight and a half seconds behind. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on chat now. Yeah, it's all yeah. Yeah, they really... Ooh, third. Yeah. I won't play this anymore. Good racing, but not good enough to get promoted. Try a little harder. That's so good for someone like you. That's what the screen is saying. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Fine. 
fine. I don't want to win anyway. Who needs a win? Uh, anyway, it's a really cool game, and I think it's available in a lot of places at this point. Um, Motorhead is what it's called. Really cool game. I would recommend it. It's very... It is difficult. It's an old-school racer with the appropriate difficulty level that comes with it, so... Um, and I said it can be a lot easier. I remember not breezing through the game, but I got pretty far in it as a, when I was young, so... Um, yeah, um, thanks, Boca. Welcome. Yeah, it's a nice machine to play that kind of game on. Why don't we do a little uh, shoot 'em up here now, or uh, FPS game? So yes, I did do a little sacrilege, and I'm using ISO files here for some of this stuff. So, uh, whoops, just easier for this particular one. Play sin now. So uh, again, that's why I like the Voodoo Three in the sense that I, I mean, again, we talked about it earlier, but buying it for the market price, it's it's a hard sell, especially with the prices that kind of keep asking or coming up now. That it's just hard to to make that argument. Sin is a first person shooter based on a Quake 2 engine. It runs quite well on this. And also <laughs> Well, there you go. That's a good one for uh, Ted here in this game. But uh it does utilize the advanced Oriole uh sound position that the Montego 2 offers. This is very edgy. This is deep 90s. Extremely edgy and cool. And uh, you got a lot of flashing screens with this stuff hopping up here, so we'll see how this... Yeah. So there's a the thing with this company that outputs like these... I don't know what it is. Um, some uh, drug called Sin that people go nuts over. And then you're the action hero that's coming in and clean them up by shooting everyone, so... You know, that's basically the premise of this plot, so... It's a, it's a cool game, though. It's definitely a later era for the Quake 2 engine, because the Quake 2 engine underpinned a lot of different games, um, and this one was one of the later ones, I think, so... Yeah, this was featured, I think, prominently in magazine ads and stuff, because it was, of course, the fully CGI-rendered uh, main antagonist, so... Um, yeah. Um... Oh. Directional mic, so... Do you mean, um, this I think is 99, this particular game. Suka, do you mean that you hear the, like, me in positional and I'm moving around, or do you mean the game positional? Uh, because, um, the, uh, I'm gonna say, this uses the positional stuff. I'm not sure if that's gonna come over. I am capturing the audio in stereo, so we'll see if that blade is the main character's name, of course, because he's, he's cool like that. I think I set the... Ooh, that's a little slow. That should be under software. I don't think so. I don't think so, buddy. We're going to go with this here. Apply changes. There we go. That's an annoying thing. So... What I did is that I'm, I'm very pleased with this microphone. This is a Samsung Q2E, and I got uh, that was recommended by like Epos Vox and a whole bunch of other ones as a good starter mic. I'm using that, and it's really good at noise canceling. What I'm also doing is yes, I got speakers running. What I also have in OBS, and we can talk about this if you want some tips on that. It took me a long time to get to this point. I have some noise suppression and noise gates on my audio input and everything in OBS, which helps reduce background noise. So when I stop talking. It goes dead silent, right? That's the idea, is that it only captures my audio, my voice as much as possible, so. Oh, there we go. 1998, that's incorrected, so. Uh, let's see. Oops, that's not what I want. I want uh, mouse look, free look on all the time. And then high-end system with hardware acceleration, please. It's like every time they're kicking in the Aureo, like, effect, it goes bonkers. I remember I was testing this game earlier just to make sure it ran. I try and do that before stream, so I'm not just fumbling at the moment. Um, but it really seems to not want to take the settings. Come on. There we go. Yeah, that's the thing. It just wasn't that long ago. It's riding it really slow there. Rookie, please. Um, well, that's a good point, Rails. There's a lot of 
cards. I think I, I'm hoping to make a video on that. It's like when you get into retro, it's easy to go for like the, you know, like these things. Voodoo 3, awesome, you know, cool. But if you get an XP machine from a 2002, 2003 era or something, that will set you for a broad range of supportive games, things you can do with it. And it really scratches that nostalgia itch, I think, a lot. And it's not maybe as cool as some of the deep 90s, you know, original stuff, but you can get so much out of a machine of that era. You can have a cool operator, of course, because it's the 90s and they're all cool. He's a hacker. He's a helper hacker. There's a cool guy, Blade. Sec forces emergency. Code Delta 9. Uh-oh. Freeport City Bank was just taken over. Robert hey, Dermot. Welcome. Thanks for joining. I just watched your video in the uh, GPU June. It was awesome. Really good video. With hostages still inside. They're heavily fortified. Playing Sin here now on our uh, P3 450. You see the specs rolling around underneath here. We'll cycle around again, so... That's right, Ted. I think you have the biggest claim to fame here with Voodoo SLI in back then. I think a lot of people have experienced later, but back then, I didn't know anyone that had Voodoo uh, 2 SLI. Um, yeah, you're right, Zucker. You can build a machine for next to nothing for that era and have a good time, so... Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's There's so many NVIDIA cards out, and... Yes, not all the cards are as cool as some of the other ones, but the fact that you can really have the same experience much cheaper, and I think that's the thing that's missed a lot in the retro circuits, is that we want the coolest, we want the awesomest, the SLIs. We can't all be as cool as you, Ted. The Voodoo 2 SLI stuff. Uh, but uh, you can get so much out of it if you go with a uh, you know, mid-2000 spec machine or something. And that, that's what I hope to cover at some point. It's like, you know what? If you're just starting out with just basic retro stuff, you don't have to go right for... If you can't find it, that's my point. Not everyone has access to finding it. I've gotten lucky from work, coworkers, friends, uh, you know, thrift stores, or marketplaces to finding machines, but some people don't have access to that, and you know, uh, you know what, but like a Core 2 machine or something like that, I usually is given away almost, because offices use them, um, can be had quite easily and cheap, so. <laughs> you got the, uh, stripper, uh, stripper interleave, interweave. I thought this was cool, you start with this turret thing here, and of course this is later in the Quake 2 engine's life, so... Uh, you get some cool extra stuff in a modern setting. Keep the non-hostile body count down. We'll see what happens, okay? Gotta shoot them all down. Yeah, you're right. You can really crank it up. And one of my favorite things to do is actually getting an XP machine and playing, like, you know... I think I was playing Unreal 2, like Far Cry and those era games. Uh, and I was playing with a newer machine that up on 2007, 2008 or something, but just like cranking stuff. Um, I have a rooftop landing at the bank. Okay, but is there anything else to shoot now? I think I blew everything up. Well, there we go, blew up the ceiling. Prime objective completed. Yeah, exactly. So now the Pendrin 4, like, you can get so many of them, right? He's so cool. He looks like the uh, protagonist from uh, Comic Zone in Genesis. He's got the ponytail and everything. Oh, nice. I'll check that out. Minimize hardcore cash. Eh, you know, whatever. Shot everyone. Isn't that good enough? That's what I'm here to do. I'm a renegade. I don't have time for this stuff. I'm going to kill everyone. Yes, they're very much a good source of P4s. And that's the thing, you can get P4s from a dime a dozen, right? But again, maybe not the most desirable one, but you sure can get a lot out of it, so. Yes, I think that's a very good point to make. I remembered it versus how it actually was. And I actually used that as an example when I did my little 486 video. Like, the Pentium class machines is how you remember playing the 486 games, but the 486 is how it actually played, which goes for every generation. Uh, when I think back to those, like, oh, yeah, it ran smooth and no problem and everything. Um, uh oh. Some problems with the stream here. That's not good. YouTube's not receiving enough for smooth streaming. Hopefully, it's still running. The game didn't crash. Everything's fine. I think OBS is 
freaking out. I have the settings fixed this time that I had last time, so hopefully it's ever coming in, so... Yes, the P4 motherboards, certainly the Dells around that era, had a lot of problems with the caps, so... It's weird, I'm still, uh... YouTube is complaining. Hopefully you guys can still see me, so... Yeah, it's, uh... Starting mission. I should probably check my settings, too, because I think it's running with the arrow keys. Hopefully it's, um... Yeah, it is, uh... Okay, I think it's back now. I'm not sure what that was, but... It's funny, because I heard the hard drive on the, on the P3 spinning, so I thought, like, oh, no, my computer's turning. Oh, no. My main computer doesn't do that sound, so... <laughs> yeah, I worked in IT back then, too, and the we had a Dell text come out, I think... Let me check the settings on the controls here. I'm not sure it's WASD. Um, play controls. They, uh... Boy, this is annoying. Sorry about the noise there. Alright, there we go. We had the Dell Tech come in. I mean, I, I remember calling him. It's like, hey, Rob, or whatever his name was. Like, you know, yeah, we got another uh, bad cap motherboard. And he's like, okay, I'll be right there. They didn't even ask questions anymore. They just came out and replaced the motherboard. Because they were all so horrible uh, around that time with the caps. For those that are not familiar, the uh, the uh, capacitor plague of the early 2000s was pretty bad. Here's Zoe. We'll uh, switch action camera in a second. There you go. So we'll switch to uh, action cam, and this is my cat Zoe, for those that haven't seen her, but kind of a calico thing. Um... Yeah, it is a really good platform, but there was a capacitor plague, what they call it. There was a lot of bad caps from, I think, one of the major suppliers uh, had problems with capacitors around the time, and they supplied Dell and a whole bunch of other OEM manufacturers, leading them to mass quantities of caps that just busted, so... Nice. Yeah, the positional audio that must be using... Uh, was using the Ariel 3D, which is fully supported in this game, it appears, so... That's a good, uh... That guy just spawned right there in front of me. Come on. Come on, game. Thanks, Dermot. Uh, yeah, this machine, um, I basically got as a freebie. Someone was posting it on, like, a local marketplace, and they were like, hey, uh, I need, uh, it's very unreal looking. You know, you can have it, um, if you help me get the files off it, because it was an old college computer. So this is un, I have not reloaded it at all since, um, this uh, machine, so or that this machine from that era, so it has everything on it from 1999. Nice little uh, loading corridor there, hidden for streaming. Damn, it's Blade. Damn, it's Blade. Oh no. Stand there, go kill him. JC, oh. Open that thing. I'm working on it, Blade. I love how cool he sounds too. Open it, Blade. Can I someone look it. up? Um, Damn, this character. Is it voiced by anyone specific? I'm not sure if there's... Oh, I think it's always detected just being fettered in a second, so... Oh, I have some more ammo. But I like these later Quake 2 games because it really is... Um, you know, they, they kind of knew how to press the engine a little more and get more out of it. And I also love the, the setting in the sense that, you know... Quake 2 games may have been a little blasé at this point, but I, I enjoy the modern setting. Modern, because, you know, Quake 2 is cool, but you're, you're on a military base and you can only see someone brown, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so there's no one I really recognize. Thanks for looking up, Sucra, but yeah, I don't recognize those names, so... <laughs> Very nice, Dad. Oh, Interesting. That's good info. Thanks, uh, Christopher. Because, I mean, I was in Capacitor Play, but I certainly didn't, like, remember reading up on it too much, so. But it makes sense. That's kind of what happens, right? Someone comes up with a bad thing, and everyone copies that, and there you go. Can I open these? Shoot. Uh, disable hostile threats. Locate security office key. Minimize, host minimize uh, hostage casualties. We'll see what happens. I'm a loose cannon. You can't stop me. 
You can't stop me because I don't know where to go. I don't think there's any buttons to open doors. Let me check real quick if there's a um, use button. Look up, center view, use is you. Of course it is you. Oh, that's reload too. It's not even on auto run all the time. Oh, I can't, you can't open. All right, we're gonna have to rebind that. And where's our, um, so let's see, use should be E, there we go. And then is there a way to do always run? Oh yes, always run, please. There we go. Now we're running like an action hero. Damn, damn, damn. A security door. Damn, a security door. Damn, security door. Look also at the uh, textures on the weapon there. Look how much it's fluctuating. That's really interesting too. So that has to do with the rendering technique being employed here. There we go. Now we're actually moving in a good clip. But yeah, there's a lot of good games from this particular era, and I think a lot of them can be played very, very well on a. We've encountered heavy resistance near the front of the bank. Uh, who am I? A good guy or bad guy? That's a bad guy. Oh, that's not one of mine. Sorry, dude. Didn't mean to shoot you. I think this has actual head damage, so I should probably try. There we go, some headshots. Ah, there you go. Yep, I knew there was a name for it. I'm glad there's more uh, technically inclined people on here than me, so. Quick break. Hey, Retro Hardware. Thanks for joining. Hey, I see a lot of people here from the uh, GPU Junway, um, uh, and I watched a lot of your guys' videos, and I'm really excited because there's a lot of really cool videos coming out for uh, GPU June right now. Huh. Interesting. I haven't. I didn't know that uh, Real Cinerosity can. There was a specific one you could overclock like that much. Um, doing alright there? All right. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't recognize that name at all. I didn't know. He's trying to mimic. He almost trying to like mimic Ice T a little bit. And if you played um, Sanity Icon's Artifact, he's the uh, voice actor there. And it almost reminded me of how he does the voice there. We're going to take a beating, so. Ammo. Let's see where we're going now. You want some of this porky? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, set of really cool videos. I'm excited for everyone participating, and um, I'm really uh, glad Pixel spun this up. So, I say the whole GPU June crew is here. It's awesome. I uh, say my own video. Uh, immediate self pimping here should be out here in a few days as well. I was asked to participate a while back and. Nathan's an awesome guy. I'm glad he uh, he got this up and going. It's going to bring a lot of good to the retro community. And a mini-map here. Ooh. That took falling damage. How lame game is this? So, I think that we've determined that... So, it's a Tekram... I'm trying to remember now, because I gotta think back to the video, right? It's a Tekram something. <laughs> but it's an impression TX5 through 3 or something like that. I think we determined that it would take by using that internal modifier uh, that the K62 uses, right? For the 400. And it would support that because you set the multiplier to 2, I think. And then use this internal, like, speed up routine to, to make that happen. Well, this is almost like an open world level here now. So for the GPU June crew that's here, I usually stream on, on Thursday. So I figured for this month, I should focus on specific GPUs instead of games. You are here. I have to look at a map. You're here, but I don't know where to go. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that particular motherboard uh, will take that processor. So I was planning on buying the... There's a coin there. A quarter. Hey, a quarter. Now you'll be able to pay me. Wow. Secrets. 
Should I go through this door now that I know how to open doors? It feels like that playing in Metroidvania sometimes, right? You're like, you've, you know, learned the ability to jump. In this case, I learned the ability to open doors, not due to an ability, but just because I found the button, so. We're going in the right direction, I think. Can you help me? Run to safety. Thank you, officer. Your doors. Someone's shooting me. Who's shooting me? Whoa. There we go. I think I have a health pack. But I don't know how to switch around, though. So I have a quarter I can use on something. Bleep bloop. I'm gonna shoot the computer. So was that my... Disable hostile threat, so just kill everyone, basically. The thing behind here. So book caves should be a secret, right? I think I can use... Oh, there's a key. Aha! Locate security office key. So then I just gotta find a security office. Actually, I gotta use things there. Let me look what the button is to use. Um, health packs there. Inventory items is brackets. And then use. So, okay, so that wasn't the right key. There we go. Oh, I guess he just used the health kit when I picked it up, so... So what, uh, since we're speaking about specific about, uh, that's true, I should save it. The glorious beige tower in there. Boom, headshot. What are some of your uh, first-person shooter Get out of here. favorites from this era? Because there seemed like there was a lot of them. You know, we got the obvious ones like Unreal Tournament, um, Unreal, and, and those games. I think she just popped through the wall. Fair enough. So I just need to find my way back to where I was before, because I think the key will let me into that back office there. Reload as the same. Can I use the order to call someone? Yep. What do you want? Leave me alone or I'll have Bruno come down here and tap dance on your ass. I think he actually used a quarter to call somewhere. But yeah, it sounds like yeah, I'm a little intrigued now to mess around with the Oriole here. Yes, that is a very good one. I think we streamed that one time, right? That was when the uh, group here helped me out with... Ooh, little clipping. Um, helped me out with getting things running on that one. But that's, I love the, the retro community in general because everyone has been watching for so long now. There's several old-timers here now that have helped me with my setup to get it where it is today. So it's, you know... Back and forth a lot. No, it's true. Um, yeah, I'd like to... Uh, I'll probably stream Unreal 2 at some point. I actually like that game. I, I think that, you know, we kind of wanted more out of Unreal 2 than it provided, right? Because Unreal... Damn, a security. Damn, a security door. Okay, I have a security door, but can I have a key? No. If I have the key to the security office. Got to find security office. But I liked Unreal 2. It wasn't, you know... Special, maybe. Like, Unreal 1 was so, like, groundbreaking, and Unreal 2 was just kind of like a more of a generic shooter. Which I suppose is fine, but I think people are expecting more. But if you take it for what it is, it's a fun, you know, military space shooter thing. I, I think it was a really good time playing that game. ATM, that's where I came from. Oh, please send your account number. Haha. <laughs> I bet I can find the account number somewhere. That's where I started. Welcome! Welcome back. I, I would love to say your your name, but I can't unfortunately read the uh, Asian characters, so... <laughs> it was extremely camp, yeah. And, you know, you're right, it wasn't a disappointment after, but yeah. Welcome back. We're playing on the Voodoo 3 this time for uh, GPU June. A big group here tonight. I just gotta find my way around. Uh, now I'm, like, talking so much I'm losing my way, because I think this is where I came from now. Yeah, this is the security office, so... Or not the security office. This is where I got the key. I don't want to be here. But I can't go over here. Oh, there's a map here. That's why they put the little maps everywhere. You are here. Unfortunately, this map is so low resolution. It doesn't tell me much, but... I think I can go over here. Uh, what I was mentioning earlier, the uh, all real positioning audio was actually quite good. I'm a little curious to play this with headphones or something, because... Uh, Wei Looney. All right. Welcome. Uh, yeah, the... Uh... Damn, the security door. Damn, security door. Damn, security door. 
But where is the security office? I have the key Don't now. Uh huh. Employees only. That's where I want. Oh, there's a turret. No, thank you. Focus here now. Oh, oh, oh. Run. Run to safety. Thanks, man. Run to safety. Run Thank to safety. You, Let's see. There's my machine gun. Oh, oh, oh. Now I have a machine gun. Uh, minimize hostile or um, hostage casualties. All right. Yeah, voice acting, I think, is a really good thing, too. Um, and it's kind of like made it more interesting, right? So. Really? James, Jace Marston? Is it Jason or is it James Marston? So I'm trying to think of, um, uh, what's it called? James Marston is the guy that played uh, uh, Cyclops in the X-Men uh, Sony movies, right? And also in Sonic. Or am I thinking of someone else now? There might be more than one people or one person too there, so. D. Jason. Okay, so that would be someone versus James. Then are they same related or are they unrelated? We need the vault combo. It's in here somewhere. See if you can find it. Vault combo. Does he have any relation to James Marston? Because I thought that was a bleep bloop. Bleep bloop. You want to talk to the microphone, Zoe? Yeah, it does have that uh, kind of thing going, so. So, where can we find the code? Yeah, <laughs> that was epic. Um, I think Half-Life 2 is probably a turning point for a lot of us that like retro games from that era, right? It was just so engrossing. Um, even with a mute character... It just was so well spoken. So I need a key card, but I do have the key. Damn, a security door. I know it's a security door, but so I have the key to the security office, right? Yes, there's a uh, long story on that one. Or long story short on that one. So actually, there's a video studio at work where they produce like in-house training videos and stuff like that. And my coworker uh, was like uh, clearing out their studio and he wheeled in two of these. It's a 14L5. And he's like, you want one? I'm like, uh, yes, please. I would like a PVM for free. So I feel really bad because a lot of people hunt for them and and it's just dropped in my lap, right? So I got really, really, really lucky. Because finding one of these days is near impossible. So I used the Mr. Platform on that one. Uh, or just whatever I'm streaming otherwise uh, console related on this to, to use. So it's really handy to have it because it's a multi-format. So it can do all the, you know, Amiga and all the random resolutions and whatnot. So yeah, I got super lucky on that. And I, I realized my luck on that one. Because yeah, they're hard to find now. And like everything else, retro tax, right? So... Ow, Zoe, we clipped your nails not long ago. So, I need to find... There's a machine gun here, right? Ow, 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 ow. Damn, a security door. Damn, a security door. I thought I had the, the key to the security office. Doesn't look like I can break that. Ooh, nice. Well, as it, as it would happen, so have I. <laughs> I used this uh, earlier to just showcase. I do have a Voodoo 3 3000 uh, sitting around, but as far as I understand it, the PCI and AGP have almost no difference performance-wise. The um, AGP on the Voodoo 3 is basically just like a bridge connector. It's not actually utilizing enough of the advanced AGP features, so... Damn, a security door. Security door. I thought I got the key to the security here. Um, yeah, I have considered it. Um, I think that when they become more readily available, I might splurge it because it seems like a very useful devi uh, device to have. It's expensive. 
But you look at what it does. I mean, it replaces a frame meister and everything. Now, what I will say too is that for retro content, for me, when I stream, I use the mister a lot. And that's really handy because it can do 1440p. If you're not familiar with the mister is, the Crash Course, it's a FPGA-based uh, emulation device, right? It emulates the hardware and not the game. So it's become very, very popular Damn. for that purpose. I think it was enter to use, right? Inventory use, enter. So that is right. And I have the key. Double check that again. Employees only. Um, yes, it could. Uh, the nice part here is that I've used a data path. So right now you're watching upscaled footage. So I'm upscaling 1280 by 960 um, in the in the hardware. So this is running normal 800 by 600, but upscaling to that because I want to have um, a, a steady signal, if you will, so I don't have to switch back and forth. But the game is running at 800 by 600 right now. It's just upscaled. So doing it through the data path, which is kind of my preferred... Oh, Zoe, really? My preferred capture method for vintage PCs. Um, that really gives you a lot of flexibility. But yes, I, I do kind of want to have a... Retro Tank uh, 5X, just because of the flexibility it gives you. Aha, uh -huh, I'll take that. Pretty smarter than the average bear. Security office. Aha. Uh -huh. Security doors. Unlock. Vault security. Set low security. Turn vault passcode. Six and eight. Two numbers. <laughs> Yeah, the 5X, I think, is just, it's, for those that are not familiar with the 5X, is like just a kind of an all-in-all -all, uh, retro scaler. Six and eight. That customer accounts, oh my. I think you can hack the accounts if you want to, if you're so inclined, but. Ooh, a little closet, ooh, nice. Shotgun. Headshots do work. So it can scale just about, I think, every retro console. You can correct me there, but the 5X is kind of like the be-all, end-all retro scaler, it seems. If you want to scale or capture old-school uh, console footage, at this point, I think it's the new king. Uh, but it's pricey. It's going to be like, it is 300 bucks, I think, basically, plus shipping. So, But it does so many things. Plus, then also downscales. All right, maxed out on ammo. Where it came from? Well, security doors are open now, so I can move around. Huzzah! Uh, let's see. Disable hostile threat. Gain access to the vault. Yep, that's where we're at. So we need to go back to the vault. Did I come in the same door? Oh, there's another door. There we go. So, for me, for now, uh, the Mr. Dust... Look at the interactivity here. It's got, like, Duke, Duke 3D level of interactivity. The, the mister does so much for me, and I think it's a good one to have, so... Um, Alright, appreciate it. You sure you don't want to leave it on so I can blather over your streams you can hear in the background? My, uh... Got camo, or cam camo, cameo. Alright, 6 and 8 is a vault code, so we need to get out there. Um, yeah. That is true, yeah. I, I think that... You're right, it's it's become like if you want a one single scaler to dust just about everything at this point, then that's it, so six and eight, I think. Maybe we can have a uh overlay in the background of me screaming as always calling me here. Six and eight or was it eight and six? Do do mission updated. I think I have a shotgun now. There's a the shotgun. Hello, shotgun. Wait a second. I'm picking up thermal activity in the abandoned building next door. Follow the tunnel. There we go. Always like the shotgun. Roger that, Jason. Uh, I'm going that I do have. Um, I actually have that same device. The Star Trek no EHD USB 3 cap. Uh, that's I used that originally for capture. And I think that Nope, already got it. Already got it. It's a really good device. 
but um, it does have its little quirks because of the um, whee, because of the special Catherine DOS resolutions. I have the custom firmware on it or a custom driver for it, which is the thrillness, I think. But it's a really useful uh, device, and it captured 240p on the fly, right? So I can capture that and then scale it in software. So it's not maybe as good as a RetroTank 5X, but it does work very well. Ooh, nice. I would love a TNT 2 Ultra. I don't have one right now, but that's a darn powerful card. It can do a lot, so. There's a kitty cat here, if anyone didn't see that, but. Uh, some nice loading times. Maybe we'll switch the game here now and play uh, something else since we made it through the first level here. This is just keep going like this, but I, I like this game. It's a nice one, so we'll take a break from the shooter. Maybe go to uh, something else, but yeah. That's the thing. You're right, Dermot. It's, it's good to have those things in a toolbox, and between all these devices, pfft, out here, I, I don't like having being blocked because of what I don't or do have. So, save here. I don't know why this loading screen is so slow. Uh, saving game felt open, felt open. Got it. Alright. Do we want to play a uh, RPG? An action game? Or um, not a racing game? Or even better, let's do a quick 3D Mark run. I installed 3D Mark 99 on this machine. I figured, why not? Let's do a quick uh, benchmark here, just for the sake of it. You think, Zoe? All right. Uh, let's do the basic 800 by 600. Do a benchmark here. It's a classic, right? For uh, I remember uh, spending a lot of time on this. So again, this is an error-appropriate machine running an error-appropriate benchmark. So it's easy to think of benchmarks as like, oh, we want 2,000 FPS on them, right? But I mean, pff, cat here. 30 FPS in general, I think, is what we were targeting, or even lower, especially coming out of the DOS era. And a lot of games were just running really slow, so. But this you handle, oh, I remember. Ice. I'll play a little Revolt after this, then. Also, I like that game. I'm also terrible at it, but it's fun. I ran through this so many times, so many times to get higher frame rates. Tweaking, you know, Googling, or not Googling, but Alta Visting trying to find like the optimal driver settings to uh you know just get a little more speed out of it and uh, you get like one fps and use a reba tuner to tweak some setting and i think it was just about as much just as fun messing with that as it was to to play the games back then that's why it really bothers me i can't remember what card i had i mean it must have been on tnt2 i mentioned it before on other streams but basically my brother went to like a trade show or something and he called me and said like hey um they uh, have, like, what I think was TNTs at the time. Um, and, uh, yes, I did put Alien Mr. Predator on my list. I didn't install this machine. I'm out of space now, so I have to uninstall something to do that. But uh, the I just can't remember if that was a TNT or a TNT 2, and I don't remember what I had before, because I had the S3 whatever came with my machine, plus the Voodoo 1. one. And after that, that's where it's so blurry for me. It must have been just whatever came shipped with my... P2300, because that's what I ran for a long time. Um, so I might have been a Reba 128 or something like that, you know? I just don't remember. I'm not sure where that machine ended up either. I'm going to have to dig through it next time at my parents' place, but I'm hoping to fly back to Europe here now within a few months, so. I remember these. This is almost as nostalgic as the games. 800 by 600 is probably the most comfortable spot for this card. Woo! I'm not pushing it there. For this particular card, right? Um, again, the 16 mag, um, AGP, AGP. So much cat. I don't want to touch anything now because I've been petting the cat. I'm just gonna short something out. I gotta touch some metal. There we go. Some exposed metal. There we go. I think I found something exposed. Yeah, not running so hot there, but yeah, I think my cousin and I we spent a lot of time running these and then just. Tweaking, running, changing the settings in the control panel, but this machine is untouched. Based on the guy I got this from, the kind of guy, well, he was, I don't think he was tweaking and optimizing this. There's no Reva tuner on here. It doesn't even have any advanced, you know, Voodoo drivers on there. It's just bog standard. Probably as Dell shipped it, I think. So, 
Uh, yes, they do for sure. I know we stream Chattel to Empire. Ooh, trippy. I'm amazed that the uh, capture card has taken all this in stride here now. But uh, we did play... Um, uh, we did play the uh, Chattel to Empire on the Buddha 1, and I had some problems with the capture on that one. did work, so... Okay. Um... Yeah, I think that... So, yeah, you're right. So, the interesting part is I found the manual for that same car, the, the um, goodness, motherboard. And in the motherboard uh, manual, it says it only supports K6300, not K62, but probably uses the same stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm assuming then I should be able to use that multiplier to get to 400, at least based on what people were saying. And I watched Phil's video on it, too. So, you set it to 2, right? And it kicks in automatically. So... There's no, I should be able to try it, and it works, it won't boot, so. And the 400 megahertz processor, the K62, seems like it's pretty cheap. They're like 20, 30 bucks, I think, so not too bad. But yeah, this is really fighting now, so. With a nice combination of cards there. Just, uh, yeah, that's a good progression there. I think that that's what a lot of people did. When a TNT 2 came out, I think that pretty much was, you know, the winner in general around that. Era. I don't think AT ATI was competing very well at that same. What do you think? There you go. Just a few more minutes of this, and then we'll play some Revolt. Hmm. Good, maybe, yeah. I think that, especially when we're streaming with that machine, and we did stream with that one um, a few weeks back. We found that the processor was not enough to keep that P that Voodoo 2 uh, with enough speed. We ran, like, um, what was it, Revenant on that one, and it was really bad. <laughs> I think we were determining it was a PowerPoint slideshow for a while there. So we switched to the P3700 and ran much better. Great. I don't know if this is a good score or a bad score, but this is the, what you get out of the box. I'm sure you could install a newer driver and it would go faster. Uh, if anyone wants to screenshot this, there you go. We can look back at the video and compare it. But um, yeah, this is bog standard from Dow. Heavily used machine. Not that optimized. And this is what we get. So Nice. There we go. All right, we'll play some Revolt. I love that they kept little uh, sounds on there for everything. <laughs> yeah. Can't uh, can't use everything, right? So, yeah, it's that's the thing. You get to the P3, and it covers such a range and can do so much that there's minimal gains from having individual machines. More so on the uh, interesting aspect of it, because when I did the K62, I kind of wanted to do a 1998 build, if you will. That's what I focused on, with some exceptions covered in my videos, but it. Uh, it's nice to play with the same limitations that you may have had, might have had back then. So that was a neat thing. But if you want to actually have, you know, enjoy it, if you will, then yeah, P3 is going to do so much. Uh, we'll do arcade. Yes, Trespassers is good too. I played that demo for that. And I think uh, Kim Justice did a huge video on it. I didn't watch it yet, but the <laughs> controls, I'm sure you guys remember, but the controls were holding the gun and you can use your mouse to control it, but mostly it was like flopping around, smacking yourself in the face with the gun because it was like a loose control of the maneuvering. I remember the controls in that game were so janky and so hard to control. And then, uh, you know, it was really fun to look down and see your, your uh, health was a tattoo on your chest. Um, we'll go with this one, sure, why not? All right, nice car. We will see what happens. I noticed that I'm really bad at this one when you flip or something like that, so. Um, yeah, you're true. I'm not sure how much you can downclock a P3, right? We can use on a P1. You can use a lot of the tricks. Tricks to, um... Whoa. The, the tricks to downclock things, right? This is a really fun game. I would love to play this in network mode. I never got a chance to do that. 
Oh no! I don't know the button to... To, uh, reset. <laughs> I don't know about the reset. Uh, controller settings. Free controller. No, not that. No! Oh, flip car, I see. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do that again. Left, right, fire. Fire the missiles. Reposition. Horn. Pause. All right. There we go. Now we're going. Uh, if you want to, you know, DOS, like, yeah, there's there's only so much you can do um, as far as, like, getting the maximum support, right, from everything, so. So I think that uh, a dedicated DOS rig, like, I, I really like a, a fast pension for that, uh, like a P166 or 200 or something, I think is really nice. Um, and then, uh, you know, a P3, really, at that point, and that will set you for so many things. Can't see what's going on. I don't think we're gonna beat this uh, tournament here. Might try another, another time. And I never messed with a P two two three three. Uh, fast as I've messed with the P one two hundred. And that that I have actually, and I might be streaming with that here soon too. Hong Kong. Oh, catching up. At least we may not get last. I think the biggest thing getting used to, uh, whoa, to this is the flimsy controls. And I mean that in a good way, in the sense that it's using, you know, the weight of an RC car. And that throws you off a little bit. Oh, this is a really nice, like, concept. And I'm surprised we haven't seen any more in this series. And there's other, you know, RC car games, I suppose, but... Not this particular series. This was on Dreamcast, I'm pretty sure. I think I have it on Dreamcast. But, uh, you know, unless you're running the speed sensitive uh, games, I think that a, a Pentium class rig will, will set you very well for, uh, you know. Oh, don't shoot me, I'm like in last. I'll try that again now that I know what I'm doing. Oh. That's not a good sign. I'm assuming it's if you don't finish enough time, then you'll just blow up. Yep, whoops! Alright, we'll restart. Um, yes. Whew. And I am messed with... Um, yeah, you could just do DOSBox, you're right. And I think that, especially the PCM, what's the one? I know that um, LGR was talking about that on Twitter. The, which is the new one? I can't remember. The one that emulates Voodoo's too. I haven't tried it yet, but it looks like it's really, really good. PCM. I'm doing better this time. But as far as DOS games, I like, you know, you can play all your heavy 3D games like, you know, Duke and those things so well on a, on a faster Pentium class machine. Oh no! I, I, I really need to try this in multiplayer. Look like it's a blast, especially for Windows 98 era machines. Oh, it's hard to see what's going on. Do better. Do better. ECM, okay. I would like to try that out too, because, I mean, it looks like it's a nice option to have. I like that these things are getting more and more mature, you know? I thought about doing, like, because the... 
You can, of course, do really cool things with the AO486 core on the Mister. Is a really nice thing, too. Oh, I boosted myself there. And boosted so fast, I flung around. No! Dang it. Doing well there. At least the AI I'm running on the lowest difficulty seem to be not perfect, like they're messing up. Oh no, I just exploded. This is fine. Spoiler alert, it was not fine. Time for shortcut. No! Dang it. All right, just have a lot of cat hair. Brush it all the way, I promise, but... I'm really focusing now here. That a silly boy. Sorry if I misread your name again. I'm really... Trying to focus here to not just horrendously lose. I'm second right now, so doing all right. Oh, missiles! Oh, third! Oh, I was close there. Whew. Yeah, I know for sure uh, the Super Socket Seven Rides can do a lot of multiplier stuff. So, um. Oh yeah, that's the thing. So here now with the streaming setup, this I'm streaming separately on this guy right now, right? Which is the uh, P3450. But otherwise, I have a P3700, a P1166, and a 46 all hooked up, so I can stream from it any time. That's kind of my my go-to to, to uh, for using. Whew. It does hold up really well. It's fun. Um, I could easily see it playing... I mean, you could see this being like some kind of Unity game that came out now, right? I mean, it's got that same nice style to it, and... The battery is not useful, because it makes you go so fast you spin around. I think that's the problem with the, uh... Again, the weight of the vehicles is so bizarre because it's so light. That's what it takes getting used to. So I don't think we're going to beat this championship here on the first try. It's difficult. I'm running on the East's difficulty, but again, I think the uh, the weight of the vehicles is what's really throwing me off. Just save that one. I'm not last right now, though, so that's good. See, like, when you, like, go the gas and turn tightly, uh, it really, like, whoa! Oh, there's a rebuild? Like, did someone uh, custom make it? Like, uh, you know, homebrew developers? Or did uh, someone actually port it to, to modern? I am in the wrong spot right now. Dang it. Go battery. Oh, liquid Schwartz. Come on. I think I have to get in third to qualify, so. Alright. Oh. I think it's going to have a real low uh, speed. <laughs> You're talking about space pulse quotes? Yeah. Uh, it's easy to get started on that one. I think we talked about it last time, right? It, uh, I was watching that with my father-in-law a while back, and we loved the movie, but then realizing that all we were doing was just we knew every single line of the movie. <laughs> oh, nice. Community remake. I love when that happens, so. Press pause to continue. You qualified. Well, I'm at least not eliminated from the uh, from the championship yet. But yeah, it takes... It, it's the old school kind of racer where you basically need to memorize the level and this might not go so well. 
Ooh, nice reflection or uh, see through there. This might benefit greatly from an analog stick because my hard movements are making it hard to control the car because it kind of wants to spin out. I love the uh, idea behind this because, you know, it's the uh, extrapolation of micro machines, basically, right? With cool uh, RC cars drum around. What's happening here now? Hard to see what's going on. Planetarium. Or at least a... Well, I went all out on this level here. Oh! And now this just keeps throwing me off. It's so easy to spin around. Whoa! It's really spinning out so easy. I was a little hitching there. I could actually tell. Um, oh, no. The hard drive I heard zzzz, from the hard drive, and it's. My goodness. I had to pick a car that has better grip, I think. Okay, whoa! Oh, the floor is like wax. That's what's going on. Bluey. But still, nice reflections. I mean, it looks great, I think, uh, considering the era and age, right? Oh. I'm gonna explode in eight. Bluey. I don't know what cost me to blow up, but look cool. Why can I not be last at least? Whoa. Yeah, this is one you probably have to do over and over and over. <laughs> this RTX on, nice. Got a very, uh, whoops, Marker Machine, or not Marker Machine, but Mario Kart vibes, obviously. Don't think I'm gonna qualify on this one. Just... Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I picked the wrong one. Yeah, this seems like a game that's just made to be played with friends. Um, and I, I don't know if it supports, like, hot seat multiplayer or anything, or if it's just... My goodness. This level is not my friend. Maybe try uh, one more time and then we'll play some Darkstone or something, because I kind of want to check that out again, because it's been so long since I played it. But I do remember that game very fondly. Having a lot of fun. But I'm going to get full speed, and I turn, uh, the car just does, like, weird whip motion. Like, there. I'm not sure if that's just the expected, like, momentum from the car. Whew! <laughs> Looking for the walls! Uh, I do not have any speed on Porsche Unleashed on here, unfortunately. I could install it, but, but the problem I have is that I'm running out of space. I have to uninstall something if I'm going to install something else, which I can do, for sure. I do have the disc for, uh, but I don't think I ever played it. You know, I know it's a favorite of um, testing, right? I know a lot of people use that for uh, not to start benchmarking, but testing software. All right, let's see if I can focus here and actually not do completely terrible. Avoid the walls and not slow down, but I need the walls to help me steer. Can't see. Doing a little better now. I think someone ran into that. That's good. Focusing here now. Focus to the max. Oh no. Death. That quickly. 
that quickly. One mistake. That's all it took. Brutal game. Especially, I mean, I'm running on the easy difficulty, so maybe I should play on the junior difficulty level on the collisions and stuff instead. <laughs> I'd be better suited for my uh, skill level here. Yeah, I think it really showcases, and I mean, it runs great too. I think that, especially on a racing game, you know, the sense of speed or movement is so important. I don't know what the frame rate is, but I mean, it feels very smooth to play. Uh, but again, it was made for Dreamcast, right? So it's that typical era. Wasn't there a negotiation between 3D effects and um, Sega to put the 3D effects chipset in a Dreamcast and it never happened? I remember that was a thing that they said, like, oh, we're gonna. Uh, you a huge boost there, but it never ended up happening. Oh, come on, don't shoot me. Ow. Not cool. I gotta turn around completely there. Good grief! Maybe I'll honk at him. I'll make them feel really bad about it. Yeah, I think it would benefit. Um... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I should play Destruction Derby, but yeah, maybe we'll call it there on this one. I failed to qualify. Oh well. I think it needs a lot of practice to get really good. Um, I gotcha. So Sega like USA then, but that would have been a heck of a combo because I mean a 3D effects powered console would have been cool. I think the Dreamcast has got ATI video in it, right? Doesn't it? Darkstone, let's go some uh, hack and slash here. That's right. Yeah, I think that game really would benefit from a uh, controller for sure. Uh, just be able to use oh, VR, okay. To uh, get that kind of uh, granular control of my turn. That was the, the challenge I found here. So, oh, Ethan, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. And if you can't stay long, I appreciate uh, visiting there quick. But uh, the. Uh, the I think the control is so finicky that then when I'm using you know with basically max max turn max turn max turn and that smacked me over and over. Plausible deniability. It's not my fault. It's the game's fault. See, works every time. Darkstone, for those unfamiliar, is a Diablo-style um, game with hack and slash with a central city or town you go back to as you're delving deeper and deeper into the dungeons. But it's a full 3D engine, and what I remember specifically about it was that the uh, uh, it used to break occasionally. I did. I tried, but and, yeah, it wasn't so-so. Uh, the uh, what I remember most about this game is the fog to restrain the the visuals that you see. Are, it was very tight, like you, you you saw very tight. There wasn't much you could see. Almost an N64 game. Um, yeah, I was tapping the brake in some of the turns uh, more than you think actually, but it uh, I just need more practice. I think I was doing better on the original ones there without the hard walls. The uh, ones that really uh, threw me off were the tight walls there on the uh, museum level, for sure. I think it's just one of those you need more practice, because I remember playing it a little bit, but I don't think I had that game on PC back in the day. Uh, I think I got it when we bought our Dreamcast. That's where I think I played Revolt the first time, which works really well. We'll do a new game. All right, what... Class should it be? Because we got Fighter, Amazon, Wizard, Sorceress, Assassin, and Thief. I don't think there's any difference on this. Oh, that's just male or female then. So we can either be a Fighter, a uh, Mage, or a uh, Assassin or Thief. So what's the uh, greater good thing here? So let me know. We can go with Fighter for simplicity's sake, just to things, or we can do with the wizard and drop bombs and whatnot. I remember that. I played a wizard back when I was a kid, and I think you drop uh, the uh, out here, my goodness. You drop little spell bombs and stuff like that, so that's pretty fun, uh, but let me know what you guys think. Is there a particular class that you'd like to see? Fighter, caster, or uh, stealthy guy? He built for adventure. The warrior is truly powerful. He his build means that he's a strong character, able to uh, 
handle any weapon in direct combat. Obsessed with knowledge and power, the wizard devotes his life to the study and mastery of the magic arts. A mediocre fighter, he is mainly revered for, revered for the potency of his spells. And then introduced to the assassination techniques and camouflage by guilds of bandits, the assassin is a character without qualms or morals, but will be effective and clinical in combat situations. A uh, wizard it is. We do, uh... There, we'll pander to the whole thing. Why not? Uh, novice. And I think it uses the same thing as Diablo, that, uh, you know, you're leveling up and can do higher difficult levels to get better loot, so it's very, very Diablo-like. But with his own little twist, so. And CGI, because it's cool with CGI. And back in the day, I remember seeing CGI sequences was a kind of reward for playing the game, right? It was it was awesome when he added it. I don't remember the story on this game or anything. It's just that there's bad guys. Look at that facial animation. And it is that motion blur is the best way I can describe it on the CRT and for those that didn't know I'm playing on the CRT um, right here obviously and I apologize for the flicker that's happening because the refresh rate doesn't match up but the uh, blurriness that you're seeing on the, the cutscene here I'm seeing that on the CRT as well so um, that's in the game and not the not the capture I mean they had only so much they can do in encoding this stuff I know that was the whole feel deal with Games are on CD now, so we can cram in CGI and all that stuff, but they still compress the bejeebus out of these uh, videos, I think, so there's a lot of, like, pixelated artifacts and whatnot. Ah, oh, yes, I remember. There's a nice little sequence there as you enter into town. Left -click on him. The speed of character, left-click on him. Let's talk to this guy. Go and speak to my colleague. I am busy for the moment. I'm busy for the moment. Welcome. I am Bill and Murray. To see you hmm. again after all these years. I heard the sad news about your parents. I sincerely hope you will find the one here. Things have gone from bad to worse since yes, this town and it's got monsters. The so kind of thing. <laughs> the people with their savage raids, and no one in the country feels safe anymore. These are troubled times. Acting, these are troubled times. Um, does this interface look very Amiga like to you? It's got that Amiga style to it, and the little floppy. But I am wasting your time. If you want, oh, cat hair everywhere. Good Jeez. for nothing colleague can show you around town. You are bound to find that it has changed a lot since you were a child. Do not hesitate to come and see me from time to time got if it. you need information. It will be a pleasure. Okay, we got the gist of that. So yeah, it runs in a full 3D engine, uh, but you see like where the black border is, that's what I think threw me off as much as a kid. And I wonder if there's uh, patches that expands that now, because the fog is really restrictive, and that's probably just to make the game run better. A monastery dedicated to following the goddess Calibar was attacked last night. There was not a... Got it. Let's see, do we have... That's hidden stuff. Uh, spellbook. I do not have any spells yet at all. Will not help me. You can upgrade, repair. See, I assume I can't... I have a coin. Do I have any equipment at all? Where's my inventory? There it is. So I have a spell thing already, or a wand, so... I feel we need to just go in and fight a little bit, so... Ooh. Cure identify. Talk Healing, to. Spell reversal. Magic and black magic. Irma, Irma is at your service. Great. I have no need of your services right now. I think the one thing I remember playing this... My friend and I were playing this in high school. And he always played the fighter and I played the mage. And we actually played co-op and it was really fun. The fighter, as he runs, is like a total John Cleese, like... Woo! 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 Um... You think you can adjust it, yeah. Somewhere. In, my friend. Everything here has been designed to aid you will feel pampered. Great, but... 
bank account. Good morning. Good morning. Friends are always welcome here. You can make a good. I think you can, yeah, deposit money. Because I think when you die, you drop that stuff. So you want to avoid dying if you can. Ooh. Spells. Let's see. Spellbook light. I don't have any money for this. Scroll. Uh, five magician. Let's see. Can I buy a spell? A resurrection, telekinesis, teleportation, magic door, slowness. Uh, it's got a little Doctor Strange vibe to it, yeah, to say the least. I always enjoyed um, games that. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say psych. I can teach you the following Ooh. discipline. Yes, please. Communion, detection, recharging, meditation. Congratulations. Your lessons were. You've gone up one level. You have gone up one level. One level. I think we just need to go out on the countryside and beat the Jeebus out of some monsters. Welcome to the training camp. Training camp. You All right. Train in archery, fencing. Controlling fireballs. Let me do that. This is archery, not steel. Welcome to the magic training area. The staff allow you to throw fireballs. Thank you very much. Uh, to throw fireballs, take this magic staff. Then click on the monster using the right mouse button. Aha! Uh -huh. Can I bring the staff though? Because otherwise my staff is the hitting thing. So it's a fun game, yeah. <laughs> Is there more? Can I exit now? I think you can uh, blast pretty freely here. Can I leave now? Welcome to the map. Oh, I can't bring the staff with me. Lame. Yeah, so I don't have any spells right now. Cast magic missile to darkness. Um, and pay the bard. I kind of feel I want to get out and hit some monsters and then see what we get, because right now I have no loot or anything. But it's got that, you know, very addictive loot kill upgrade class thing uh, that Diablo has, right? But it's got a very specific art style. It kind of makes me want to buy the big box again now. Because I had this one. I bought it when it came out. Fast moving, he is not. Is there a, a map? Yeah, map on off. It's on, but. Let's go out to the uh, front here. <laughs> yeah, the uh, reference for that. Land of Ardil. Yep, here we go. Let's go, uh. Club some. Oh, there's a map. Let's see. Skeletons. Let's see how this goes. Aha! Take that. I'm a wizard. I'm going to hit you with my wand. Scroll magic door. I think that's portal. Town portal, basically. Uh, the speakers I'm using is um, one of the Cambridge Soundworks like 5.1 systems with the small satellite ones. Um, I'm not sure if you can see These guys. Uh, <laughs> osteoporosis, yeah. And it's got a subwoofer underneath, so that's what I'm using. Yeah, I do like that. It's a bit of a creative thing there, but... Um... Huh. Yeah, nice. Thanks for checking, Rails. Uh, that looks like it's going to work just fine then for me. I'm curious to try it, because yeah, the, I, I was going to get the 400 and make another video on it, because it seems like that would be an easy one to, to do. This feels like a... You know. Mika the witch turned our wives to stone to punish them for be We can do nothing about it. Mika the witch was I assume I have to statue of a woman. Statue of a woman. Let's get some spells up in here. I yeah, should have bought a staff that can actually do something. 
But it's got some cool ideas. I mean, I like the, the visual style and everything. And it you can't uh, you can't set the resolution. It's 640 by 480 whether I like it or not. So, But it's a cool idea for a game. The Village. Yeah, you can get a lot of performance. Because, yeah, I mean, the Super Star 7 is awesome. But, yeah, they're getting expensive. Really expensive. If you don't have one handy or access to one. I don't have one. And you look at the prices, so... But you can get quite a lot of, you know, performance out of a uh, Socket 7, so. Especially they are going with the K62400. It's a pretty fast processor after all. We could drop some spells or something. That'd be great. What's this here, then? Coin. Now I want to play this game for real here now. Well, yes. the witch. I went up a level. Huzzah! Ooh, uh, points. Magic, of course. Does it give you a tooltip? A little bit of health, too. Mostly magic, of course. Boost our magic stat in the beginning. Hello. If you have come to ask me to break the spell I cast on the women of the Bring back my youth and my looks. Can't do that, lady. I'm not a miracle worker. Yes, he does. Uh, I'm a wizard. Usually, you start games like this with some sort of spell, but I have nothing. Oh, nice. That's true. I could try that and see, uh, go into the 83 and see if it handles it. I don't know if that board will, will do that nicely or not, but I mean, I don't know much to lose. At worst, it will be unstable and crash, so it's not like it's going to explode. Um, I don't know if I have to crank up the voltage or anything on the processor. That would be the big one, but. That might be a little too much to, to risk. But that's worth a try, because I think that machine, uh, you know, it's fine for what it is, but if it gets a nice boost, that will increase the things that computer can do, right? Quite a bit. But, yeah, I should get that for 400 for sure. Because I think that it has to do with, um, like... Isn't there a thing when you crank up the bus speed? Is the PCI card going to take it, right? Uh, Say, so, yep, I am very smart, but I have no spells. The wizard walking around with a uh, staff to hit people. Um, Man, yeah, the speakers are always like... I, I had the 2.1 for that Cambridge one, and I did really like it, and I'm not sure where that ended up, but I really, really uh, love those. So then I think I was in Shop Goodwill. I saw this 5.1 show up. Now, I kind of wish I had a 2.1. And there's a unicorn that I can free. Does it give me a wish? The padlock is well and truly locked. My friend, the unicorn... Uh-huh. So... I can pick up the fairy. Yeah. Got a fairy. Just need a key. The padlock is well and truly locked. Padlock is well and truly locked. It is in quests here. But yeah, uh, I think the thing is just that you get a little claustrophobic in how tight this world is. You can't really see much, right? So it's the same thing still. So now here's a water area, but I wonder if there's a... Uh, modern uh, patches here that would expand it and, and make it easier to play, but I think there's quite a very vibrant modding community. Not vibrant, but modding community still going on for this game. If I remember right, looking up a little bit on patches, there are still fan sites for this game. People have done, like, really deep things with it, so. Find the key, I guess. That's a dead end. He's not in a hurry. Is there a there we go. Now we're running. Whee! And this is where the, uh, the uh, warrior looks like John Cleese, and his legs just go, like, literally straight out. My friend, my friend. Previous dialogue. Oh, exit. That's nice. We'll go in here now. Ooh, it's really, like, grid-based, and it's difficult to move around. Twelve gold pieces. Randomly laying around. Take all the gold. 
What's this then? Do level one. Oh, this is the uh, dungeon. I remember that. So yeah, this is just the exterior of the world, and now you go into the dungeon. This is where the fun starts now. So it is above all a dungeon crawler when you think about it. It's very dark. I have to increase the brightness a little bit because it's so dark. Ooh, helmet. Rags. Getting lots of cool stuff now. Well, that's pretty dark, isn't it? Maybe I should increase the gamma a little bit because that is very dark. Candy Mountain. <laughs> Got the rags. Ooh, right click to read. I have, a new spell. I have learned magic missile. Is there a darkness perhaps around that I can uh, cast that at? Magic missile. Look at my hat. I am fabulous. Look at my hat. Amazing. Uh, let me look and see it increasing the gamma just a little bit because that is awfully dark. Stand by here. You're going to see maybe stuff. Uh, Let me find the button for it. <laughs> okay, we are on 640 by 480. So let's... There we go. I'll we'll make it a little brighter. You can see a little better. Yes, a spell. Huzzah! I can cast. Clang. It's almost funny to run speed is making it a little difficult to control, but there's something oddly I'm satisfying about hungry. I'm getting hungry. You gotta eat too? Yep, that's your little uh the survival game. Aha. Uh -huh. Take that. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the thing with speakers, it's it's hard because especially on retro thing it's you know you get the same experience that you might have had using a pretty cheap generic speaker but it is nice to get a true real speaker too so oops I mean I meant to let that guy out Ooh. Let's see I think there's probably stuff to get in here chest I think some Neophyte's cape. All right, that's probably an upgrade for us. Giant wasp. Yeah, that's a cool game. Ow, that really hurts. That really hurt. <laughs> Playing Daisy. Nice. Uh, let's see. Some rags. We can sell that stuff, obviously. And then I can use the scroll, I think, to return to town. I want to get some more loot first. Chest, mana potion, food. That's helpful. Always eat random food I find in dungeons. So it's definitely a slower paced game than, you know, what you might use for, like, Diablo. We're just hauling around, but it's a fun game. I like it a lot, and I'm starting to like it again now. I haven't played it in forever. I think the water fountain lets you. You can't keep a map. Can you do a smaller map? No. See if there's an option for that, because it would be nice to have the map. Uh, Dithering is on. Nope. No options. Continue. It would be nice to have the map smaller, like you have in most games, right? Or later on, so. You're not wrong. Woo. There you go, yeah. That's true. I could um, cool it down a little more. With sword. A bow. I'd do better with a sword at this point, but... Ooh, nice little room here with stuff. Club. Shield. Aha, I got a shield now. Look at that. Whee! 
there a way to... There's no way to highlight what's laying on the ground, though. We keep getting lower and lower in the levels. Going deeper underground. I think the magic missile expands and gets more powerful, too, as you level up, so... It's a, it's a really interesting game. Um, I mean, definitely, you know, Diablo, basically. <laughs> Uh huh. There we go. Uh, get plenty of food there. I can't use that. Damage one to three, one to two. We'll get a club instead. The staff does nothing. Uh, it does look like a little drink tray. <laughs> The helmet, I must say, is quite ridiculous. And as a Scandinavia, I find it mildly offensive. No, probably, but Vikings didn't have horns, dang it. I think you get one of the spells you get later that I remember enjoying a lot uh, is basically a magic bomb. You click somewhere and he drops a bomb on the spot you click. And that's it, so. Okay, so you have to just replace the fan connector then, unless you can get a... Or a lot of the motherboards will su uh, support, like, jamming the through fan connector, depending on how it's wired, right? But it should be pretty easy to replace that if needed. Sounds like there's a plan. I'll have to make a video on that. Oh, his head came clean off. This little dithering effect there on the uh, on the uh, light there. But yeah, I played this in uh, co-op, and that was really fun. I think I had the when I bought my new P3 500 at the time. I kept my two P2 300, and a friend and I used to play um, co-op at school. Yeah, it's I I really want to start replacing everything with Noctua fans really because. There's retro and there's, you know, there's no huge benefit of having original fans because off, more often than not, the bearings are shot or you have to lubricate them and you can only get so good on the, you know, you can only do so much. Um, really? Well, I know that um, 3D effects, you know, they started with the arcade machines, right, before they went to uh, producing the first Voodoo card, so... I don't remember if this game is procedural or not. It might be. I think about it. Like Diablo, as you know, many of you probably are aware, Diablo randomly generates uh, world for you every time. But yes, there are some key locations that are the same every time. Um, but otherwise, the uh, map layout is random every time. So a big perk for Diablo, and I don't remember if this one is, but you pretty much have to. If it's linear, exactly the same every time, it's not very fun to play. We, uh... Yes, light. Inventory full? Yeah. You have learned a new spell. Yes, please. You have learned a new spell. So, how do I... Uh, right button spell. Huh, I'm trying to just drag it over here. Interesting. That's helpful. Let there be light. But I like to... I have to switch like that, but why can't I... Ah, oh, there we go. Shift. Alright, now we're in business. 
Now it's coming into clear view here, but I think we should probably use a town portal scroller and magic door. Whoa, that's a magic door, all right. Town, wee! Roller coaster. All right, we need to sell some junk. Oh, you're gonna actually pan the camera out. That might help a little. Oh, struggling a little bit with that max zoom out there. Um, but I should sell stuff. Publishing. There we go. I should sell my junk. 240 gold pieces for rags? Ow, those are some good rags. He gave me 240 pieces for the gold, for the, uh, but then only, uh, one piece of gold for the, uh, all right, fair enough. So this is a scepter. It has nothing special about it. Can I repair? There's no point in spending money on this stuff. I'm sure I'm going to get new stuff. Uh, that I remember was a kind of a standout thing. Loading screens are actually quite cool. Uh, nothing to recharge. And probably a bigger spell book, or a pre-compiled spell book, I think. Uh, this is 640 by 480. I could not find a way there might be a command line switch. I didn't have time to mess with it, but otherwise it runs at 640 by 480 with no, no change, so... Uh, looks like I have everything here. Can I? It is a pleasure to see you. I okay, didn't want to talk to you. The, the mediation. I don't know what these do. Learning. Congratulations! Congratulations! You learned learning. Good for you. You have got up one level. Fair enough. That did something. Huzzah! Time to go cast Magic Missile. Maybe save. Oh, we should put the money in the bank, too. Deposit it. Because, yeah, if you die, you lose all your money. So you don't want to... Um... Risk that. Can I ask how much gold you want? Another game on Amiga was Lost Dutchman Mine, which is kind of like a survival game where you're finding a, a, a gold mine. And if you don't deposit your money there and you lose it, then, uh, yeah. Not the same thing. Magic door. Whee! Cast light. Very useful. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, it's a lot of rags. Rags to riches, am I right? Wait. Oh, hello. Another one? Come on. I think remember the uh, mage gets pretty powerful later on. The amount of spells you get. I mean, you're seeing the basic uh, uh, basic gameplay loop now, right? It's pretty much it, and you keep just getting stronger and stronger. Uh, let's see if I've been over here. No. <laughs> A good way to describe it. Where have I not been? Up here. Yeah, exactly. If you guys remember when I streamed Diablo uh, a couple months ago, the first uh, interaction with the Butcher did not go so well. I can shoot through the door. I'm getting hungry. I bet you are getting hungry. Yes. But cherry. I actually need to buy food. I don't know what these things are going to do. I'll probably just keep pumping my main stat. And yeah. That's true. The butcher never goes well the first time because you're like, mm, fresh meat. And you just kind of panic. Healing. Uh huh. You have learned a new spell. You have learned a new spell. That's useful. I'll say, uh, I always enjoy playing Magic class uh, or in games. This is probably the level down. Oh, Tab can open that. Okay. But um, one thing in Dragon Age Inquisition, I played a mage there, 
which of course is you know huge RPG. But it had a lot of events or things that let you use magic, like to reconstruct a bridge or something like that. You know, I like that they let you interact and it's not just killing monsters. Um, yeah, that, I might do that. So I have um, a machine that probably is capable of that, but it'd be fun to play that era of games as well. I don't want to tie myself to one specific period. Reflections. You have learned a new spell. Reflections. You should have stayed at school. Want to hear that? There we go. Reflections. So I assume reflections just cast things back. Yeah. Doesn't last very long, so it's very short for. Um. Yeah, true. You're getting into that era. You do have some of that problem. Uh, because I was trying to like just capture. Half-Life 2 for one of my XP machines, but I i mean, I literally couldn't get it to work because I have the original install disks, but it's Steam or nothing, and XP is not supported anymore, so it was... I tried a few things, but I bet there's a way to do it now, but that was kind of an annoying thing, so... I love the way he runs. Hup, hup, hup. I'm a wizard on a mission. Nothing in this room, right? Nope. Oh, that's right. there's nothing in here. Not right. <laughs> oh, okay, you can. I had to try it because I didn't spend too much time on it. I was busy getting a video out. Uh, Sucre will test too. Sometimes you just get rushed to get a video out. Um, but I bet there's a way to do it. Because I, I was trying to just, I was making a video of the shuttle, I think, the uh, XP machine. And I figured, like, well, showing Half Life 2 is a perfect for this system because that's what I actually played on it, so. Anything in here? That sounded good, but there's nothing there. Gold out there. More gold. Okay, there's a guide. Because I had Steam, and it's interesting because it ran like an install Half Life 2. It kicked off the Steam installer and everything, and then it started connecting and patching. I'm like, all right. But then eventually it said, like, hey, you can't run this. When it finally finished patching, it wouldn't let me log in. But I will admit I didn't spend a ton of time on it. Um, so it sounds like there is a way. I probably should revisit that at some point, because, I mean, I do have some games, like Half Life 2, that uses Steam. If I want to play it real legit, I bought it, but I can't, so. The light only lasts 40 seconds. Wow. Oop. Helmet. Is that better than the one I have? Yes. Oh, same. Unidentified. Ooh, I can identify that, I think. All right, how do I use it? Ooh, plus 3% armor. All right. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, go for it. That'll be awesome. I appreciate it. Because, yeah, I think that um, that was a problem, right? Called in and updated, and then that was it. It was game over at that point. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's true. They were probably a lot of patches, so... I should probably try that again then, because it feels like anytime you're testing a machine from that era. Um, oh, Aziz Light! I love that movie when it came out. Oh, there's a lot of bad guys here now. It's really choppy now. Oh, hello. Too bad. There's a window open here. Take care of that. Not a fast-paced game, but it's still enjoyable. I mean, it's got the right style to it, right? So... Much better. Thank you, guys. It's... He's quoting the uh, fifth element there. It's like your uh, film connoisseur there, Christopher. Nothing in here? A... Whoa, that's a lot of... Ah, bees! Bees! 
Yeah, I don't have the big box actually for Half-Life 2. I do just have the DVD case because or CD case because when it came out in Sweden when I bought it, uh, they had gone completely to to uh, DVD cases for all their PC games, which was sad. And uh, that was cheap, so I didn't even buy the DVD release because they had the CD cheaper. So there's nothing in this room. There's nothing in that room. All right. Um, then uh, it came on like I don't know how many discs I have it here somewhere. Let's see. Hey, get off me! That's my purse. I don't know you. Yeah, I can install it offline. The um, the version I got is the CD case version. My goodness. And it is five discs, I believe. So it's got like three of these in here, plus then two discs attached in there. So yeah, my goodness. Dang it, Bobby. I work with a guy named Bobby. I tell him all the time. Dang it, Bobby. God dang it. And uh, it's brutal installing, especially when I was doing it for that video because I was spending all the time installing the, uh, the game and uh, then I couldn't use it. So it, it is fun, but at the same time, I kind of missed the DVD one. Well, yeah, he's wearing awesome. He's not even wearing rags. He's got like a real cape and everything. He's very durable. Uh, let's see where we're going now. That's right, that room. Yes, CDs. So it's on five CDs. Or I think one or two DVDs when you buy it. So this is the CD version. And you can see it actually... Uh, actually says PC CD up in the top here. PC CD ROM specifically instead of... Um, I'm going to put my finger in Gordon's nose there, but uh, instead of DVD. And uh, yeah... Windows 2000 XP ME 98 1.2 gigahertz processor and everything. It was perfect for um for the okay one yeah that's much better because it takes a long time. I installed it on that shuttle with an era appropriate drive. It took a long time to install. I'm putting all of this in. I don't have any food right now. I'm gonna starve here. I'm gonna have to go back to town. So I found some chairs or apples I can eat from this dungeon. Nothing in here. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to eat. I do have a fairy. Can I use the fairy to cast things? Hmm. Food 50%. I don't think I can eat my hat. Go back to the whoa. You can open the door. There we go. It's a janky to control. Uh, no denying that. Yeah, uh, I was able to shoot through the bar, so I was able to uh, kill some of the bad guys before I entered the room. For sure. That's got to be random generation. Look at how... Yeah, so I can go here. And a wasp comes in. Ah, oh, bees! I was able to. There we go. This is level 2, or level 3, I think. We'll play a little more and then switch to another game here. Uh, Five hundred? Oh my goodness. That's it, still a socket 7 one? Would it cranked up to 500 megahertz one? Yeah, that sounds about right for me too there, Tyler. But yeah, the first Half-Life 2, I remember playing through it and first Half-Life. Playing through Half-Life 2 the first time was just... I remember getting so engrossed, and I, I really enjoyed one key aspect, and that would be that they often have long terms of silence. Like, it's not over on the musical score. I think a lot of games try and do build attention or stuff like that a lot. But these guys hit harder. They too try and do too much with the music. And while I love music and video games, I mean, don't get me wrong, Half-Life 2 is great at building that tension without using music. It has long 
uh, stretches of silence that they're using the environment to tell the story and like kind of I don't know it's it's just really really well made as far as the storytelling goes. I, I do want to get a VR headset just to play Half Life Alex honestly, but there were so many bundled games. I know they do that still today, but it was something magical back that back then, getting a full game with your uh, video card. One of the cards I bought came with a whole bunch of, um, like, uh, six jewel case things with different games on them. I have some of them still. I traded one of them for another game, but I think it came with Morrowind and a whole bunch of stuff. And I had a friend online. Don't have enough mana. Oh, he's actually uh, DDoSing me there because he was hitting me so hard I couldn't attack back. Um, extra, oh my goodness. Nine CDs. Aren't all those Phantasmagoria and those games, like the full motion ones, Bonanzas? They're pretty big on CDs, right? Cheese it! Run away! Run away! That sounds about right. Nice. I'm pretty sure I had a Radeon run at time, but it's like, I don't know why. I have a kind of a blind spot in that area, too. Roll teleportation, that was very helpful. I will have to go back soon and eat. Um, yeah, there's so many games I want to stream, so. Uh, full bunch of video games, I'm always a little weirded out by streaming because it's, you know, a lot of them rely on waiting for dialogue to complete and stuff I'm like that, but it can be really fun. Fine, we'll go back. Must eat. Must eat. Wizard is about to die. Whew. Um. All right. I'd be curious to see if you can crank up the uh to to run that processor that fast. That's pretty impressive. All right, I need to get my money. I should sell first. Not this guy. It's definitely struggling here in the town scene, but it's, you know, it's era appropriate. Did I not shift? Nope. Yeah, that's a Stargate, isn't it? Stargate ish. Don't sue us. All right. Um, get my money. I gotta buy some food. Withdrawal. How much gold do you want to take all of it? And where can I buy food? Here we go. Cheap too. Torch? Oh my. Carry a torch. Yeah, I can't get a. <laughs> hey, I played a mage in um WoW, right, originally. And yeah, I know the uh so for those that didn't play World of Warcraft. The mage could summon refreshments, which was food or water that would help your health or mana, respectively. And, uh, yeah, that took a long time. I remember at the highest level, you were, you know, there was that video that came out that showed how long it took to summon, and you were summoning and summoning and handing out food, and then they got the tables out, and it was it was a thing, so. Uh, I'll buy some cheap food, a few apples. Oh, apples. I have. I don't have any more scrolls for Town Portal, which would be bad if I didn't have that. Um, that is true. Um, ooh, buy some grapes. I'm loaded and rich. I don't care a torch, but I can use just a spell, so. Uh, all right, that should probably last for now. I assume I can rest. It will only cost you a hundred gold piece. There you go. Just click and full, uh, full food. So what can I level up? Recharge? Nothing. Can I buy? I need some town scroll, I think. Light, resurrection, telekinesis, teleportation, magic door. Thousand gold. Oof. I could also just hope that I get one, but I don't want to risk that. So, ouch. Stung. 
And these spell books, I think, are pre-filled with spells. So you can basically have different spell books that are pre-built for a certain kind of build, if you will, a spell build. Um, I can teach you the following disciplines. I don't know what mediation does. Detection, communion. Do language. Congratulations. Your lessons were that was a quick done. lesson. You have uh, let's deposit our cash. You want to right, maybe we'll do a little more of the third level, and then we'll uh, switch game here now to something more action-oriented. Ooh. Maybe I should save. Game saved. Wow. Full uh, audio on it, too. Game saved. Yeah, I like these little transition scenes. They're really cool. That's a little flair to it. This is dark. Good thing I have... I cast light. We're not in a hurry. Is walking leisurely towards me. Level up. Uh, keep up with magic. I think that different things that are different builds. I think you can kind of like do a specific. Oh, that looks nice. Type of mage, if you will, and things like that. Just a. Potion. I'm not going to risk life and limb for that. Uh, did I miss something here? There's a room here. Pots. Really zoom in here now. Ooh, antidote potion. I'm going to run to spider soon then. Uh, I think you have to start on lowest difficulty. Uh, basically, it's like Diablo, where you start on one difficulty, and the next difficulty is a higher level. So you have to be like level 25 to play on a harder difficulty. So in that sense, it has the... Uh, um, it's true. It's... Uh, ooh, ooh, did I get everything? It kind of levels with you. You have to level up to get to the next difficulty. So there's only one to start on. You can't, like, I'm going to play on hard or anything. Oh my, it's really struggling. There's a lot of stuff on the screen there. That's still 640 by 480, so. Oh. He farted. Ha ha ha. I assume I don't want to touch that. I remember playing this originally. There's a lot of kiting going on. You're kind of running back and forth a lot, especially as a wizard. Which is part for the course for most of these games, right? So, still want to get sick. Half price tacos at Taco Bell, and these guys chow down. All right, for a little more. It really does. That uh, swish sound. I remember that from Diablo. It's like ingrained in my brain. All right, we're going now. Woo. Let's say, since the topic at hand is GPU June, what's your, uh, if you had to pick one, what's your favorite GPU, retro GPU? I, I, hard to not say I'm not partial to the, the Voodoo 3 just from the flexibility it gives you, but, um, probably not the best one, maybe. But it's a nice one to use. Broad range support. Otherwise, I guess. I'm going to pick one. It's probably the Voodoo 1 card, just from I do not have enough what enough. it did and what it meant. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Ah! Jeez, it. I remember, and, you know, <clears throat> my video may have something to do with that here, but it's coming out soon. But uh, the feeling of running GL Quake and Acceleration the first time was just so, I mean, just eye-opening for me. I literally remember as a kid saying in Swedish, I can't even see the pixels. Like, I was so flabbergasted by how smooth it looked. Now, of course, that's a washed out look today with the texture blending and everything. But that was an eye opener for me. It's the first time I saw really accelerated graphics. So, 
And that's my own voodoo card that I had. Ooh, with the G400, it's, uh, it's a really good card, too. Dual head. That was a badge of honor running dual uh, monitors back in the day from that era. It's done there. Buddha 2, yep, that's a very solid choice. I can't really argue with that. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do agree with the wrapper because you can use an FX card, which is usually a pretty cheap thing because most people don't seem to just love them. But if you uh, DL wrap them, then that gives you a... Okay, so there's a puzzle here then, right? There we go. Let's see. Uh, you can run Voodoo Accelerated Cars using a wrapper and just with raw horsepower of a newer card, so a little bit of the both worlds there. Really? I did not know that. That's interesting. Helmet. Magic door. Alright, now we're in business. You have learnt a new spell. You have learnt a new spell. Eight is the highest. We'll put magic door there. I can cast a magic door anytime I want. So I think we might here now and return to town and save and try another game. Aha! Take that. Yeah, gimmick, but it's like it's cool when they try and use the advanced features or different features of the, the strength of the card, which in this case is the fact that it had, um, you know, an additional output. So, game different save. button. All right, it updated the save, so let's quit out of this game. But that was a lot, it's a nice game. I like this one. Easy to just kind of get in that, that, you know, gameplay loop that the Diablo games do where you're just constantly going, right? Uh, I figured we pretty much have to, I was just a little bit, play Unreal Tournament. With, I mean, I'm not good at it in bots, but if you're playing a, this era machine with, and I do have the original disc here, the um, Voodoo 3 card, you pretty much have to play some Unreal Tournament. Of course, that I mean, with bots, it's not the same as networked. But still. Yeah, a TNT 2, I think it seems like. That's what I want to get my hands on, too, these days. Because it seems like such a good all-rounder card. And it's just powerful in general, right? I mean, it was a, it was a big boost from TNT 1. I remember it ruled a rooster for a while. Is it just me or is the intro to Unreal Tournament when they start talking? Like the voice seems like it clips every time. Maybe it's just me, but... See what the audio level's on here now. Yeah, that's true. Facing worlds. Maybe we'll do facing worlds here now. I had a lot of fun with this one in multiplayer. I think a lot of us that like this game played in multiplayer and had so much fun. Uh, it's a blast. And I still have it installed on every retro machine I have, basically, uh, for networking purposes. XP uh, 98. Um, yeah, I found that the TNT2 seems like it's not unobtainium by far, it's available. But it seems like, uh, since it's such a favored card, maybe... It seems to me when it shows up on eBay, for example, the price is pretty high. More than I probably would spend in general on a retro GPU, so... Um, four of them? That's true, you could... You could do all that. Your interrupts might be a little hellish to get working, but... I think the all 3D thing started up there. Positional audio. In 2291, in an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the a little brighter. government legalized. I always felt like the quality of this chat here, or the voice, is really low. It's sort of clipping. Like the volume isn't that high, but it always feels like it's clipping here. The fight's popularity grew with their brutality. Hmm. Soon, Leandri discovered that the public matches were their most profitable enterprise. The professional league was formed. A cabal of the ah. most violent and skilled. Anything more classic than Unreal. Space, to fight yeah, it is that. That's the thing. Tournament. It feels crunched. I, I always felt like it has been now like that. Um, Fifty years have passed since the founding. You of could do match. that, but yeah, I'm wondering how the. I mean, I think I've heard about Voodoo One and Voodoo Two. It would be an interesting project. You have been if you're gonna go to real nuts, you would do a Voodoo Three AGP, Voodoo Two, SLI, and a Voodoo One. But I think that probably. Are legendary. Really problematic at that point. Use a voodoo, voodoo three for your two D. 
to crush your enemies. That's what people have done it, so. Win the tournament. Yeah, it's... I mean... This is, uh, you know, basically like the story in a naughty film. Uh, it's irrelevant. Fast? It is not. It's sluggish a little bit because I'm used to playing this on newer, um, on newer machines because it, it runs great on XP. So it's easy one to get multiplayer going. I got a few like you know, business class machines. I just threw XP on, and you can play this great on there. So um, yeah, I'll check my graphics settings and setting setting blah, in a second here. Um, perfect. So what I did is I installed this. I didn't change much. So all I do is using Glide. Um, yes, you're right on the remap. And I have 16-bit color running now, 800 by 600. And uh, high high in general. It seems to work. It ran fine when I tested it, but um, it wouldn't do. Uh, I mean, I could crank it to 1024, but I think 800 by 600 is probably the most comfortable spot for this card. So yeah, the controls are probably not. Uh, let's see. Move forward. There we go. Bond size to double. Hard to see. We will do that. Whoops. Uh, bond size to double. Whoa! Can you see the settings? You squint? I also like that they had different fonts or the, uh, the style. I'm going to metal. Gold. That's not working. Never mind. That's a very large font. All right, we will do a. That's right. It just starts off now. Skill. Adept. There you go. Oh, character creation. I gotta create a guy. There we go. That's right. You gotta actually work your way up in this one. I don't think a death meant tutorial. I think I know what's going on here. Oh, you want me to change the settings? Before I go into the game. That's right. All right, so... Come on. It's phasing worlds. But that's a capture flag, isn't it? There we go. Um, yeah, I wrote 2004, I think, is really good, too. Uh, I have most fond memories of this one, so this is probably where I go, so. The classic bots. Uh, Alright, average is fine. So we probably need more bots. Because how many people are in this match? Um, because that'll be four, it'll be not even, so we probably want seven here. So that we have um, four and four at least. All right, let's see what happens. But I love the fact that this game will run on on everything, you know. Gotta get up and get the sniper. I don't remember. It's been so long since I played this. Ha <laughs> ha. Archie blows. Oh, blue guys. Ha <laughs> ha. I fell down. That's my guy. Oh, ultra kill. You're relieved. Oh. Angry. I got telefragged. Thanks a lot. I need some backup. Die, bitch. 
language. Where's the... Oh, there's the sniper rifle. Anyone else coming? Haha. <laughs> Stop blocking the shot, you doofus. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Ah, oh, memories. Come on. Do your thing, bots. Doesn't feel fair, does it? Ultra kill. Haha. -ha. I suppose we should try and actually capture the flag too. Monster kill. I need to get a land going with this game here soon. <laughs> Monster kill. Oh, well, we should capture the flag here soon. I can't think of any other level where you can get Monster kill easily. Unless you have a lot of people in there. Oh my goodness. They just keep spawning. Like lemmings at this point. Cover for the flag. Don't kill. Oh no, I'm out of ammo. Ramo. Why is there one bot to stand here? You should go out and shoot things. I got this bot. I should have to try and go capture the flag. It's a little lame to just sit here on snipe and camp, but it's effective. We can hit. Ah, uh, memories. I think the assault level is probably where I had the most fun um, when we played in the land when I was younger. It was just so satisfying to have the. Uh, Back and forth like that. I've got the flag. Boy, yeah, I haven't watched Red Ver or um, Red versus Blue in ages. That's old school internet. Don't kill. 
Just the AI never goes up to the tower to shoot me. You are the winner. I'm the winner because I just decapitated everyone. Oh my goodness. There are so many mods for these things too that were awesome, so. My goodness. Now we're getting into ones that I don't recognize or remember her now. I just remember that one. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I mean, I meant to do that. I'm not going to do quite as well uh, in that scenario. Definitely struggling a little bit when you get to the uh, action compared to how well this game does run on uh, newer hardware. Oh, we got our flag. Got the flag back. Whoops. Oh, memories. To drag computers around and. Got it. Um, I remember going to one LAN party one time. And my buddies were like uh, all loading into the. Or they were carrying stuff, and I was coming there with my CRT. I'm like, can I get a little help? And they're like, no. So then I'm like trying to carry my CRT and everything up by myself, mildly successfully. I'm stuck on a train. Get the flag! Oh, that's not good. I'm stuck in here. Stuck again! Doing really well on this one. <clears throat> Trying to return to base. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it becomes a default one, you know. When you're gonna play a land party game, classic, then you basically start with um, Unreal Tournament. I feel it's like a good standby. Do do do. Little orchestra hits. Yeah, that is very satisfying because it is just like split and a gun gone. Flatgun really is the defining weapon for me for this game. It's just so powerful. Get a good hit in, and uh, yeah, that's it. There. Where's our flag guy? They're out. Rampage. Rampage. Some health. I think our the flag is in transit. Yes. Red team scores. I got the bigger machine gun. Double kill. I'm gonna finish this match and then call it here on this game. Oh. Woo! Cover me! You run faster with the flag? Because it sure feels like I'm running faster. I need some backup. Get your backup. I got the flag right here. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Unreal Tournament in a nutshell. That was a great game.
I feel a very good one to, to play on Ubuntu 3 or P4, P4, P3, 450 kind of thing. So, uh, what else do we have on here? Uh, that's right, I had installed Homeworld as well, but I'll play that for a little bit. I also want to install a new game, another game. Now it takes so long to install, but uh, oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know if I remember I had a handle. I just made something up on the spot. I think usually I'm trying to be cool with my friends. I didn't really play it online at all. It was just with my friends. So and maybe uh, we'll chillax a little bit at the end there with uh, Homeworld. So that is a um, great game too. We're going to call it pretty soon. I realize usually when I play these things, I get caught up, and then all of a sudden it's very, very late. But Homeworld is a very atmospheric RTS game set in space. I guess I haven't played it. But yeah, you're welcome to share any handles you had, because I think, I think I was trying to be cool and like, I used the word Excalibur in some variety back then. Never really used it online, but I felt cool, you know, pretending like it was cool. I think I was introduced, trying to use like 3D Studio Max to create a logo for myself, but I didn't get anywhere. <laughs> oh, the 90s. Waiting for the CD to kick in, because interesting enough, because it's installed from the D drive, it actually um, doesn't want to, or from the E drive, it doesn't want to run the game from the desktop. If you're trying to run it straight up, it just fails, because it can't find a disk, I think. Maybe it'll be different this time, yeah. But if you launch it from um, from autoplay, oh, it's still saying Darkstone. That's not right. Yeah, I think these drives need a good cleaning because they're not they're not keeping tabs. Actually, let's not do Homeworld. We'll do another one that I have installed here, um, which is even worse. Another action adventure game. So we have uh, Crusaders of Might and Magic installed here. And that's a hack and slash. That's very bad, but. And you know what? It's cool when you get a handle and you stick with it forever. I like that a lot. I've switched throughout my online career. Come on. Read this time? I think it's doing it. Yes. The Crusaders of Mind and Magic is a mediocre rune style from behind hack and slash game. I, I can't speak too highly of it. I bought it really, really cheap, played it, and unfortunately I don't have the big box anymore because it was lost in that one, but I do have uh, this here from 3DO, set in the Mind and Magic world or universe, obviously. But uh, it's not, not, a, not a great game. It's all right, but not great. A fitting end to the evening here for uh for that so uh, yeah bad stuff happened you're a cool good guy i think our uh graphic settings we are at 800 by 600 high we'll see how that runs difficulty was the lowest one you have squire that's me that's me And yeah, I think that it really... Ruin came on after this, I'm pretty sure. This was 99, and Ruin was probably 2000, 2001. And, yeah, it's... Uh, uninspired might be the best way to describe this game. Hey, where's my sword? This it? That was easy. You gotta be more careful. I think you can block and swing. I checked the controls here. They are not... We've got inventory. I'm about to turn down 640 by 480 at this point. It's not really... Controls. Let's see what we have. Forward. Yes, please remap. Yes. Jump, space, crouch. Up. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's. I, I'm starting to do the same thing because it's like, don't get me wrong, I love pixelated graphics, you know, um, it's awesome that that's becoming a, a, a resurgence. 
and I love the throwback stuff, but there's very little in the early, trying to emulate that early 3D look. And maybe there are games out there to do that, but I've started to really appreciate it, the early Voodoo games, you know, early 3D acceleration, just how that particular look, the blend of textures and all that stuff. Uh, left click, attack, defend, click select, and cast spell is R, talk is tab, use item is Z, each. Which ones use item? My goodness. Maybe it's more complicated than I remember. Z, all right, activate his tab. That's fair enough. Got a long sword. Camera is really janky and he's really running here. Ooh, that did something. Light spell. We have a light spell. Yes, I've definitely heard of Dusk. I think Sukra, if you're still on, you cover that one right in your little video. It looks like a really fun game. Can I let anyone out here? Nope, you're on your own, dude. Wait, oh my goodness. Never skip leg day. Never. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> that may be the most impressive jump I've seen. Uh, one that I've liked to play... Um, is Proteus, which looks really cool too, which is like very Doom-like, except it's super gory and stuff. I think they have the jump modifiers that are a little too high. Uh, lighting is really flickery. Get out of the flickering lighting. Help me, My name's Ursa. Help me but only me. I only save you, no one else. Good luck, everyone else. No, Reminds me of Ultima 9 and the uh, style of game. You know, not even Ultima 9 is a deeper RPG and it has its own shortcomings. Um, yes, she's at the Citadel. Now go. I think that's cool to re uh, recreate the PS1 style, the early one. They're working on Bioshock 3 already? Huh. Awesome. Because I know Bioshock Infinite, of course, is very different, but Bioshock 3 is probably returning to Rapture, I'm guessing, where it all started. Which way to go? Is this where I came from? All looks the same. Very nice. Oop, oop. Ow. Taking a real beating here. Can I quick use this? I bet I don't remember the quick use button. <laughs> yeah, check out Sucro's video on that. It's awesome. Let's go through some of those retro shooters or boomer shooters. Henley Vine is back. Okay. Isn't that him that was working on the. Um... I'm thinking of someone else now, right? That was with the whole. Uh... Hoopla with uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, or I think of someone else. All right, which one was to use quick item? Use healing potion. H. Okay. Nope, can't use that. I could use it now. Maybe it needs to be in my inventory instead of my quick slot. Nope. Just one healing potion. Yowza. Took a lot of beat in there. Oh, I dropped it on a stand. Just cheese it. There it is. 
Just dropped a brick. All right. Thanks. This flickering can stop any time now. That is really annoying, isn't it? Still representative of the era, right? I mean, it's... There we go. Daylight. Definitely running all sluggish in the... Uh... See how I can hide... really moving fast, but... So, I assume it's using, like, a block system, kind of like what uh, Tomb Raider does, right? And he's just probably jumping to meet that block height, but that's ridiculous. Jeez. I remember right, there's some platforming stuff going on later, too. I don't know what engine this is using, if it, they built their own for this or not, but... It sure seems like proprietary. Look at this late 90s open world aesthetic. Ow, got stabbed in the back while I was gazing into the sunset or the uh. Got enough swords now, I think. Let's see, it's very typical for this era, but the game doesn't really grow into any more, if I remember right. You get some more equipment, and you kind of, you know, progress the story, but it's pretty linear. Uh... <sighs> Gonna beat him there. There's still more potions. I saw another potion here. I want it. There we go. Thank you. Uh, it'd probably... Be better run a 640 by 480, honestly, to get a smoother frame rate. But right now, it looks pretty good for uh, an 800 by 600 rock. Can I do anything? Nope. We're just kind of running along here. Got like kind of that um, heavy metal fact. Ooh, nice. Level up. Is there any uh, character development here? Character statistics. I think everything's level automatically. You don't have to do anything, so. Crusader. Yeah, look at that. Look at this rock. But it's got a charm to it, too. You know, that, again, early 3D acceleration. Maybe not as early as I was playing some other games on my P1. But the really early acceleration is just like, just no textures is a flat color, right? But um, this era has a lot of things going for it. But I would probably play Ruin rather if I'm going to play a game like this. That's a very good game from that era. Uh, I think it uses the Unreal Engine, so. Yeah, it, it's funny that we've gotten used to the FPS thing, you know, or fast games who play most of the stuff in, um, you know, pretty beefy machines these days, or you play an older game, especially, and I do, it runs really, really, really smooth, but, you know, this would have been an awesome gaming experience back then. Um, this is definitely how I would have played a game. I wouldn't have had any faster machine or anything. You turn on settings, and you were good with 30 FPS or whatever it was, so you didn't need 120. Now, it is easier to get that performance, right? What we talked earlier about, like, an XP era machine or something would, would just slay this, probably. Oh my, you can do backflips too. Ooh, an axe. Different weapons here. And now I was definitely struggling a little bit with the... And get get that mace. What the axe? Looking at it, there's a coin there too. Okay, select different old coins. My inventory full, maybe. I drop it. Oh, I have the axe there, so. What's the difference on the axe? The longsword is worth more, so. Clang. 
Um, yeah, I do. For, for Definitely for older games. You're more tolerant of it. It's kind of expected, right? I mean, most games didn't run super smooth back then. Um, compared to kind of expecting a higher performance now. You play a game like the modern Doom, it needs to run fast. Speed potion? Oh my. Whew. Yeah, it's true. Uh, if it was designed around it, that makes a big difference. And if it's a game that wasn't designed to handle it and it just starts chugging to the point where it's uncontrollable, you know, unresponsiveness, then yeah, it's not fun. But, I mean, it's easy to say the N64 because it does have a lower frame rate target for most things, but um, games just didn't run that super smooth on it, so... Oh, hello. Welcome to our humble town. I, I, I am an arrow. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to break all your barrels. Barrels of fun. I did not play Two Worlds 2. I had someone who was talking about it. I really enjoyed it. Um... If, if I remember right, it's kind of like a, you know, Skyrim-esque game, right? Or like Elder Scrolls open world style. I never got that wrong, but I was intrigued by it. It's been on sale a couple times, so I just heard it was kind of like a, maybe need a little more polish, but probably a smaller budget too. You have the Gothic series too, is similar to this, I think. A lot of games like this. Oh wow, got a load. It's a tavern. You should keep your armor in top condition. The slightest tarnish could result in a crack at the wrong time. Then you would not have to worry about getting uh, longer. That's still on. I think it's closer you're getting up tonight, dude. He's on the table. For some reason. I'm going to check it out then, because I remember seeing the game, but hearing kind of mixed reviews on it, I guess. Let's jump my way up here. I've heard that we are not the only ones in trouble. Yes, yes. That I'm on a mission. It runs quite... It runs with gusto. Can I rest? Nope. This must be a proprietary engine, right? It doesn't feel like anything from this particular era at all. Um, you know, it doesn't have the Quake style to it. Maybe it's... No. They probably built their own one for this. Wouldn't surprise me. I've looked that up. Uh, maybe they um, used the engine for one of their um, Mina Magic series games or something. It's really running with gusto. Up, up, up. <laughs> yeah, this is 1999. I have the settings cranked up to max. I think this was 1999. Um, it does say 2000 copyright on it, but I could have sworn I looked it up. It was a 1999 title, but um, oh, nice. <laughs> fill it up completely. That's always fun when you manage to do that without just breaking everything in the process or getting all of them to to uh work. I had to board up my home and move my livestock to a neighbor's. It's like a proto fable going on here really. No music though unless I'm missing something. I've seen the crusaders marching in our maneuvers. They are so noble and honorable. <gasps> I just can't get over this jumping height. But what I remember playing this game back in the day, I did, certainly didn't beat it because I think I lost interest when I bought it. It was one of those, like, games were getting pretty cheap. Um, and it was very linear. Like, you're playing through it, and that was it. But it makes me want to play Fable again now. Fable 2 is a really good game. I enjoy that a, a lot. I like Fable 3 as well. Nice. Got a rack in the stack him. One game I think that kind of falls to the wayside a little bit, I think, and I think it more of the Diablo style, right, is the first Dungeon Siege. Uh, I really like that game. I might stream it sometime soon, actually. But that was a really fun game, especially co-op. That was a blast in co-op. I had a lot of fun with that. I, used to trade with the uh, I like some things that they did. There's no loading screens. You just load the whole world and you just keep playing. 
I like that the skills are based on what you use. If you want to be archer, just keep shooting bows and your archer skill goes up and that's how you level, basically. So, um, ooh, that's a good idea. I do have a drive bay. I should do that on one of my machines because that's a really good idea for being able to extract it easily. Um, yeah, I'll stream that for sure. Uh, Dungeon Siege, I think, is really fun. Oh, hello. Please, please check out my fine wares. Check out my wares. I want to sell all these swords I have. How do I sell? Because I like to sell all my junk to you. There we go. Ooh. Take all my swords. I do have a scale one. I will buy that. Ah, it actually shows the equipment. That's cool. I love when they do that. Nice. Look at that handsome guy. <laughs> awesome. Please, That's right. I was complaining. Just stole everything, right? I can't wait to see it. I'm excited for everyone uh, that's putting out videos for GPU June. It's been awesome so far. So keep the train rolling. Um, but as the thing is, like, you're going to touch on, especially on the stream now, I'm just blathering on. So I'm going to be touching on a lot of GPU stuff, I think. Uh, let me save. I think we're going to call it pretty soon. It's getting uh, pretty late, I realized. So we'll spend a little bit longer and then call it for tonight. So it's been a long stream, but it's fun. I enjoy this topic and this machine. I expect to see more of this machine and probably a full video on this machine too as I uh, clean it up because it needs a little refurb and clean up. Nothing major. I like to keep it the way it is because I like it, but um, figuring out the see your own dry thing, cleaning it out, taking it apart. I... Uh, when I got it, it had sat in the guy's basement for who knows how long. And he said he was about to chuck it out, right? And, you know, help me get some files off it, you can have it. I took it outside and used... I have a, you know, plug-in power blower. Because buying a compressed air is really difficult to, or expensive. So I used that. And I have slow motion video, which is going... Because there's so much dust in it, it's just going everywhere. So that will probably be the main focus of the video, is just showing that slow motion dust going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I think that, you know, there's something to be said for, like, you know, making hardcore period correct is one thing. But, there's, you know, the same thing I feel with retro. Jeez Louise, look at that. Smack. Don't you hate it when you jump so high, you smack your head in the ceiling? Ugh. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, it helped so much. It was almost like, you know, it was like 50 bucks on Amazon to buy it. And I just kept like, oh, I don't want to buy it. But then eventually I did. And now it's a lifesaver. I take every computer I get, like, outside first, use that out on the patio or something and blow it out. And that makes a huge difference. And you can keep using it without, you know, the canned air runs out so fast. So and you can really direct it. And minus a little uh, brush attachment, too, so I can kind of get in there and really get stuff out. But yeah, this jump is just so fantastic. Oh, he has a big guy. But there's some movement involved here, too. You can actually shield block or shield slam. Nice. Get a little bit of complexity there. Iron Club, is that better? Really reminds me of Ruin, really. Uh, Iron Club. I don't know what's better or worse, but... Wooden Shield, that's what I have. Yep. Lots of potions. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Crusaders of Might and Magic. Oh, I think my streaming speed is... Going off something. All right, it's back. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a most surprise I made out of there. It looks like it has some more advanced combat moves, but I just can't get over his jump height. And yeah, I think that with hard drives, that's a uh, pretty much a given on as retro hard drives fail, and that's when I feel perfectly comfortable doing. Like I miss the grinding sound with this computer. Certainly has. 
Uh, I'll try and rig up something for future streams where if I have a hard drive spinning disc, put a microphone on it so we can actually switch to it to hear it. Um, but that's true. It, it does feel like a, a force jump from Jedi Knight. Look at that. Whoosh. Just put a little whoosh sound on it. It's the same move. Let's jump. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to save there and call it probably. That's a cool game, but... Um, Where I'd save filed. Yeah, that's an impressive cell jump there. Art thou certain? Yes, I'll, I am certain. Um, but I think that's something we pretty much have to take for granted with um, as things start failing, is that we pretty much have to get rid of spinning disk and go to the uh, SD card solution. So, um, yep, there you go. Perfect. Quick review. I will say armor showing gives a big deal of like advancement. I remember with Diablo 1 when you get to three points I think in the game you show the armor upgrade and that was like oh that's awesome. You can see something happening and then when that became the standard that you could see everything everything you put on your character I thought it was really cool so uh, but I uh, appreciate everyone stopping by so there's a lot of cool discussions going on tonight I appreciate it. A lot of fun when we get a lot of people on here so watch out for more GPU June videos. Sounds like we got more things coming. I should have mine out in a few days as well and I will pimp again to say I will stream again next week. I have hopefully a very special extra stream the weekend after that. A special extra stream that I'm hoping to, to cover. So more on that later, but um, hopefully it pans out. But I'm excited for that one a lot. Hopefully you guys can join me too. Um, but yeah, hopefully my video should be out here in a couple of days. I'm hoping I'm just finishing it up. But I appreciate everyone hanging out. And I hope you have a good week. And I will see you next week. Have a good one. Bay Retro or something like that. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in a week. There's the button.